everybody. Welcome back to Passions Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the soap opera passions. I am your regular host, Latara, back today with a brand new host. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Jessica Jean. Welcome, welcome, Hello. welcome. Heyo, everybody. How are you? Oh, my God. I'm so glad to have that. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Welcome, Jessica. Um, before we get into the day's episode, like, do you want to introduce yourself? Let us know your passion's origin story. You don't have to. We can just hop no, right I would in. Love to. Um, my name is Jessica, and my passion's origin story is my cousin from Florida used to come up and visit us. I lived in Connecticut growing up, and she basically like found it very comforting there. And she basically said that passions reminded her of where we lived in Connecticut and so oh. she was like showed it to me and like it for some reason became like a comfort show for me for like a while like I would just watch the first like couple episodes like whenever I was feeling stressed out and then slowly got kind of sucked into the story line like researching the characters and and the actors and just everything and I just find it very comforting even though it is dark as hell and um weird it's dark and weird, but it's also it it also is so campy and it's light. And it's, it yeah, it's nostalgic. It's got so many and there's a lot of levity to it because it's so totally. silly and ridiculous. Yes, absolutely. I'm yeah. 35. I'm the. I feel like we're all like not we're not all the same age, but it's like that time. It's a nice little capsule of like a time when shit was simpler for me. I didn't realize how horrible things were. So. <laughs> So it's comforting on that level and silly. I, I totally understand. I, I too am 35. So I feel like you and I were watching at the exact same time. We totally yeah. have the same experience. And even down to like uh, the reason I watched it. Well, I watched it with my cousin, you know? Yeah, that's like weird. a thing we did, you know? Yeah, a so. family kind of thing. Even though a lot of people watch it with their parents and like, it's like so wildly inappropriate. And it's like, they, but that seems to be something I keep hearing. on. Yeah, this I've seen a lot of people say, like on the TikTok and stuff that they watched it with their parents yeah. or it's a lot of people were like, yeah, I used to watch this with my grandma all the time. And <laughs> I will say I, the, the only reason I ever even really got into passions was because I was a days of our lives fan. And the reason right. I was a day of, days of our lives fan was because my mom, I would watch it with my mom and they, right. and days, and days was not it's appropriate. Very mature. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It was not appropriate for a third grader or whatever grade I was in at the time. So, um, yeah, but I they were like our age kind of. So it kind of makes sense. Like we love it now and they kind of just loved it then. And yeah. I and you know, I, I say all the time, like, I don't this isn't true entirely. <laughs> this isn't entirely true, but I say all the time, like, yeah, my parents just let the TV raise me. Cause they kind of did. Oh, totally. No, that's no sh that there's no shame in that. It was like kind of no, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So anyway, totally. with yep. that. Today, we are talking about episodes 671 through 675, yes? Yes. All right. And before we get into the episode, I want to say a big shout out to our patrons over on Patreon, of which Jessica is one. Thank you to Munashe, Brie Lynn, Lisa, Sid, Sarana, Randall, Hannah, Camelia, Samantha, Jeanette, Eric, Fantasia, Sean, S, Larissa, Maria, George Lopez, Fitzgerald, Lisa, Jessica Jean. Uh, Laura, Karen, Uche, Justin, Paige, Casey, Garage, Tom, Seanette, Pablo, Steven. This love, love, this list is getting it's long. It's really long. getting long. Yeah, Steven, it is. Steven, Daisy, Shane, and the latest patron, the newest, latest, and not necessarily greatest, but newest. Their name is I Lost the Game. I'm going with it. I love it. Okay. That's the first time it's not at all a name, and I like that. I'm kind of annoyed that I have to say that every week now, though. <laughs> Wait, what is it again? You say it again? I Lost the Game. And do you yeah, remember there was, like, the game? Every time you say it. Yeah. Do you no, I don't remember that. There was, like, this, like, I... We didn't really play it, but I heard about it as, like, this game, and it's, like... <laughs> I don't know. And then you lose. And I don't know. But now I have to say I lost the game. <laughs> every, every week, but I'm all right with that. All right. So Good. even though I I never went, I never lose at any game. I'm a winner. Baby. Right. Yeah, exactly. That needs to be said. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. with that said, it is time to go on with the show today. We are going to start with Chad and Whitney. I'm excited to start with Chad and Whitney. Honestly, I feel like they I 
so uncomfortable with every scene that that was happening and like i kind of fast forwarded a lot of times through them <laughs> you know Just, what that's fair enough it it was I, uncomfortable i watched it once through and then i rewatched things and then i just kind of really yeah. quickly skipped over them it was uncomfortable um but i while while i don't like what has happened and what is transpiring yeah. especially the little speech tc's jackass self gives yeah i um yeah. I do appreciate. I do appreciate that at least we are getting some Whitney and Chad something, yeah. and something from them, and that there's some something interesting happening. So I, I mean, I'm excited to kind of talk about it. It it is uncomfortable, there were some, but there were some like hilarious parts of it too. Like just like I feel like they made it seem like it was the raunchiest thing ever that Whitney did, and then they kept cutting to it, and she was just like slowly kind of dancing, and it's like, what was so horrible about that? Like that I understand. Is exactly what I said. I think I was talking to Eric last week, and that is exactly what I said to him. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, they're making it out like Whitney was being like was a like super naked. slut, and yeah. she literally was singing a song, and and oh, I think it was Maria, and Maria was like, well, she was singing a song on a guy's lap, and I was like, yeah, and and. For and, her, that's a little crazy, I guess. Right, for Whitney, is crazy, right? Yeah. To the rest of us, it's like, okay, that's not that big I, of a deal. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So. But. Have I sung? Oh, I've definitely sung a song on a guy's life. I've definitely that. done that. Like, I totally done shit like that. But like, I don't admit it. And but well, I just did. <laughs> I did it. I've done. I definitely did it in a show once. Um, and I've probably done it at karaoke, nice and drunk, you know? Oh percent like with your friends and like she's like 18 or something like I think it's very very part of the course of that age or whatever yeah yeah but the things they were saying were like like she was so I don't know TC kept saying things like she was so slutty essentially and it was they basically like, were was saying so she's out of control like that's what they were saying like they were like yeah Whitney was out of control why is she acting like this she's acting so crazy and it's like she sang a song and she's kind of loopy now I will say she is stumbling yeah, yeah it is bad that she was clearly drugged and whatever yeah. and that's another thing we're gonna get into it because we you you and I are already off on a tangent which I love <laughs> but that's another th that's another thing that I brought up last week is that she clearly was not drunk she clearly something else was going on if she was that drunk that she's stumbling you would smell the alcohol on her Eve she was doctor of the year thing yeah exactly Eve <laughs> like read the signs Eve no she was clearly like uh tripping a little bit yeah like she was herself or whatever and that's not alcohol related no no so uh, but these puritans in this town wouldn't know anything about what what alcohol is like i guess uh all right so sam and tc let's pick up with these two men out oh. in the forest they're all, all looking right. for the kids because remember yeah. sam has told tc you need to come with me he pulled tc away from chad said chad's gonna be going off to the b and b by himself like and i don't want to see you murder this kid basically right so, yes uh they're out in the forest looking for sam's kids right and uh T it's tc's like no i need to get back to chad it's time for me to get back to chad because to like murder him basically yeah. kept saying that, essentially. Yeah. to the chief of police and right. and tc and sam finally says to him finally says hey buddy you're not going anywhere because i don't want to see you i don't want to have to arrest you how about right. you don't want to how about you don't want him to murder somebody right you don't want him to kill a kid he's like going off to kill a kid it's crazy yeah uh, for yeah. something that you don't even believe the kid did like yeah. sam makes that clear later too that he doesn't even think that chad did anything to whitney so anyway right. yep um meanwhile oh, now this is where i love chad to death but i said this last week I, he lost me entirely when he snuck into he snuck into whitney's room to check on her yeah to it's check it. on her like okay no one does that <laughs> like we know what you were doing <laughs> you don't have to check on her also like she's at home safe in her bed where her parents yeah. are yeah like i think her mom has it under control right but then maybe chad knows eve as well as we do and he's just like she's a hot mess and i gotta check on whitney <laughs> yeah, actually let me go check on her because this doctor yeah she hers. might be dead in her room her mom might have given her more drugs <laughs> yeah exactly let me just ease this for you 100%. Well, he, but i he, agree it's sketchy a little bit what say that again it's sketchy 
a little bit, yeah, that he went to go check on her, like, because he was worried about her. He's yeah. like a boy, so. Yeah, it's nonsense. So, um, uh, he goes to check on Whitney and sneaks into her room and he tries to get, like, so she wakes up, right? And he's trying to get, yeah. like, some answers out of her about, like, why yeah. she's acting the way she's acting and um and then when she kind of wakes up and sees him she just is like oh chad and she starts kissing him she's super horny yeah. so she's been super horny for chad forever anyway right yeah yes. so um she just starts kissing him she's pulling off his clothes she's pulling off her she takes her top off and <laughs> to me at first i wrote in my notes he's not resisting enough like for me in my opinion <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, it's very Willy Wonka when the kid falls into the the, the chocolate <laughs> river. It's like, yeah. oh no, please don't oh, stop. Like, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um. But uh, she then says something to the effect of like, "It's time for you to see all of me," and like rips off her clothes, right? And meanwhile, Eve and Grace are in the hallway, like talking about the the events of the night right and eve has this fear that whitney might make the same types of mistakes that eve herself made when she was a young kid right and <laughs> grace is like well whitney knows better than that <laughs> yes she's not a slut like you were she's not <laughs> dumb like you were i totally clocked that too she's like whitney is a level-headed intelligent girl <laughs> She's not gonna get she's not gonna let anyone get her pregnant like you yeah. like as if it like requires an idiot to get pregnant like when you're young it's like it happens yeah, uh, yeah. so that they have that little conversation and I get Eve does seem to be comforted by this information yeah, from Grace yeah. mm -hmm. but they go into the room and Eve is mortified terrified she's like what the hell is going on here and Whitney's like oh hi mommy so awkward yeah so uncomfortable it's crazy because this girl is clearly high as hell and in like five minutes she's going to be stone cold sober and right that's yes it's so not how drugs work also like the hi mommy thing was just like weird too it was like she's not inebriated she's like a different person and then she was totally sober and didn't remember any of it like two seconds later. Yeah, yeah. She's like, hi, mommy, what's up? And then in a few minutes, she's just gonna be perfectly fine. Totally. Um, so Eve is enraged and she immediately just starts to attack Chad, which I understand, frankly, I'm, I'm, not, I'm well, gonna be real. It looks crazy. I guess so, but I guess my thing is that the way she attacked him was hilarious. Like she was just like, boop, boop. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Wind windmill arms. Just yeah, like 100%. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she she attacks Chad. Like I said, I get it. It looked crazy. It looked, she. I mean, Whitney's naked. Chad's half-dressed. And they were kissing when she came yeah. in. Right? Oh, yeah. And, it and up to this point, Eve had basically been trying to sort of kind of defend Chad a little. Like, we don't know what happened. We don't know that that's what he did. She does say, she did say last week, she's like, I can't, we can't put away the possibility that he did something to her, but it doesn't seem likely. That's basically what she yeah. said this week. Yep. So now Chad has basically reinforced all the things that TC has been saying about him. And I yeah. just hated it. It was so stupid. It was a dumb, dumb, dumb choice to make. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's fighting him, fighting him, fighting him. And he's trying to say, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. How, and she's like, how dare you? We let you live in our house. And this is how you repay us. And she's just fighting with him. And then she sees Julian standing in front of her. Like, yeah. Chad morphs into Julian. And she's like, <gasps> Julian. And she just goes harder at him, right? Yeah. Yes. Um. And Chad's like, why are you calling me Julian? As he's like feeling <laughs> the hits. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is when Sam and TC return to the house. Yeah. And they make it up the stairs without hearing any commotion. And <laughs> uh, Sam says something about like, if I ever see that Chad again, I'm going to kill him. And it's like, well. It also was, one of them said something. I forget which one it was. But they were like, don't worry. Like, she's in bed where nothing bad could happen to her. It's like why is that necessarily true like i don't know i just feel like that's exactly where someone who is like drinking a lot would be 
continuing yeah. that or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was about to make a very terrible joke that I'm not gonna make. So. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna, like it wasn't even gonna be a joke. Like it really was just gonna be a call into something that has happened, but I'm not gonna talk about it. Anyway, so Sam and TC decide to go upstairs to check on Whitney. They get there and TC, of course, finds Chad Eve fighting with Chad right. <laughs> in Whitney's room. Yep. And uh, he says to Chad, Did I, didn't I tell you to stay away from my daughter? And Chad, then Chad's like, Well, she, hey, man, she came on to me. Wrong. Oh, I know. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, He was like, She wanted it. Like, it's like, dude, shut up. You're in her bedroom. She came on to you. You snuck in through the window. It's not looking good for you, Chad. Also, that's throwing her under the bus to her dad. Like, he's being like, I feel like that's what it is a little bit. It's, I mean, yeah, especially like the wording. She came on to me. It's the instead wording. Of, yeah, instead of being like, no, that's not what's going on here. Whitney isn't herself. I was just going to say something's wrong. Like, something's wrong with Whitney. And like, he is, that's why it's weird, though, that he snuck in through the window to check on her. It's harder to deny that you're being sketchy. But yeah, 100%, the way that the conversation unfolded was so bad. It was bad for Chad, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So Chad tries to say, you know, I came, I just came in to check on her. And TC says, well, you're disrespecting me, my wife, and my daughter by sneaking back into Whitney's room. I agree. Right. I agree. You're, yep. you're disrespecting these people's entire house. You broke in. Yeah. Also, I do think it would be different if they were both, like, in their right mind and he was sneaking in that's kind of like normal teenage behavior i get that it's sketchy but it's like him check yeah it was weird she can consent to that right yeah, like exactly. she can that's she was able exactly. to consent because he snuck into her room before and she'll be like you know they'll have a little conversation and then he will leave right. he'll be whitney yeah exactly yeah so anyway uh <laughs> tc says a bunch of stuff about how Whitney about Chad getting Whitney so drunk that she does she's not acting herself mm -hmm. um and that you got her drunk so you can have your way with her and then he notices that Whitney doesn't have her clothes on like it took him a minute but he figured it out <laughs> yeah he did eventually yeah and he's like what are you doing to my daughter? And Chad again <laughs> tries to explain. But TC at that point TC just like rushes him to attacks him yeah. grabs him up and uh that's at this point the drug dealer we have to talk about the drug dealer marty outside on the phone with with, with the conscience um, yeah yeah this drug dealer with a heart of gold apparently he yeah. <laughs> I, I, he is like he like the grinch he he grew a conscience after doing all after the horrible stuff girl yeah yeah after he drugged in a completely innocent teenage girl for a little bit of money yeah. now he's like Oh, I don't this I don't know about this, Mrs. Crane. I, I wish I had never done this. This was you're you're colder than even I am. It's like, yes, yeah, okay. she would you ever come up with a plan to I hope you wouldn't come up with the plan to drug a teenage girl. Yes, didn't you know she was colder than you? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Also it's just like part of the agreement. It's like you like she paid you for this. Like it's not like her reaction to what she paid you to do is kind of irrelevant. She paid you to drug a little kid and you did. And then now you're upset that she thinks it's funny. It's like, yeah, that's the kind of person that would do that. <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he says, you know, if you if your um goal was to disrupt Eve Russell's life, you you did it. It's like she's living inside an her own episode of La of the Larry Winger show, which I just oh I love that little callback. It was <laughs> no that is it like um oh my god why can't I remember his name what's that Jerry that... Springer thank you I <laughs> was why yes okay. so there's like mm, I want to say like three hundred episodes ago uh Eve oh, has okay. like oh has... I know I you remember? remember yes I do now it was their Jerry Springer like thing yeah yeah they had a and jerry springer was actually on the show as larry yeah. larry winger i can't even Brand say the word Winger's. yeah it's <laughs> it, was a, it was a solid callback I, I i really liked it it was like the one thing marty did this week that i was like hmm, interesting um so uh, yeah ivy thinks this is all funny he tells her she's one cold woman and uh he's he does say you know i wish i had never slipped that drug into whitney's drink well i hope I learn from this, I guess. 
Yeah, get a different job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, during all this scuffling and in in the kerfuff uh, during this kerfuffle, Grace at one point. <laughs> Grace at one point yells out, TC, don't fight. Violence doesn't solve anything. Girl, shut your ass up. And Grace is so awkward. Yeah, she's like 12 years old. She really is. Violence doesn't solve anything. Like, let's be clear. I'm not 100%. I'm obviously not on TC's side. But, no. if, you, but if you just lay out the, the events of the night, it makes sense that he would be attacking Chad physically, right? Yeah. In his mind, this boy has like drugged or gotten his daughter drunk, snuck into her home, into her room, yeah. and then took off her clothes and right. is forcing himself on her, right? right? Like, yes, yeah. violence is going to solve this tonight. Also, Eve was already attacking him, so it's like right, right. So, she didn't have that. She didn't have that kind of energy for Eve. Grace, mm -hmm. oh, Grace. I love Grace though, even though she's so like awkward and like uh, puritanical. Like I still have fond. I feel like maybe it is because she's so innocent and like simple. I kind of like find her comforting a little bit, but she is simple for sure. <laughs> That's fair enough. I mean. <clears throat> I like Grace sometimes. We're moving into the area of Grace that I don't like as much. I, the early Grace, I, I actually really like. She seems like a decent mom and sweet lady. Nothing wrong with her. This is all me watching it for the first time. Like, I, I watched a lot of the earlier shows, like, repetitively. Like, I would, like, watch them for comfort. And then this is all new to me. So I'm kind of, like... I don't know where it's going. And and you guys keep foreshadowing things like about the characters. Like Beth, for example, like I know she's bad news, but I don't know why. <laughs> 100% like she's bad. Uh. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. You don't know. that. I, I try on the podcast not to like spoil stuff too it's much because I yeah. know some people are watching um, for the first time or haven't yeah. watched all of it. But sometimes it's tough. The internet is there too, so people can look things up. But like, you're pretty good at that, I think. Thank you. I try. I try my best. Sometimes, sometimes there's some things that just have to be said. <laughs> totally. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So back to TC. He's fighting with his yeah. boy, and Grace is like, Ooh. oh, yeah. well, she's clutching her pearls. Um. So Chad then expl goes to explaining that he didn't do anything wrong. Wrong. Simone comes running in um trying to break the whole thing up right and he tells to he tells simone you know i didn't do anything to whitney and he explains to simone exactly what happened from his perspective of what has happened right and um he's telling the truth he didn't necessarily i mean he did do something wrong in breaking into these people's home and going sneaking into her house, her but he whatever. didn't have like nefarious intent right like he's not the reason right. she's acting the way she's acting and he didn't go in with the intention of like hurting her in any way right and he also kind of tried to stop her, at, like, for, yeah. Yeah. A actually, I mean, he did try to stop her in these episodes, like, when she was. He did more than a lot of guys his age would, I think. I think so, too. I think so, too. He he did try to stop her. And at the dance, he also tried to stop her at the dance. He was trying to help her at the dance. So he had, he's, yeah. he's not wrong. Chad is not right. wrong. He made a mistake, for sure, in coming into this house, but back yeah. into this house. But he's not wrong. Um, so he's, tr he explains to Simone and Simone's like, I believe you, Chad. Like, I love, I love a, some, a, a, a loyal, loyal lady like Simone. She, he's like, I believe you, Chad. Whitney um, could have been more like that. Yeah, this week. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about when we get, when okay. we get there. But Whitney, I, I mean, she is coming down and she doesn't remember anything. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see your point. You know. Yeah. Um, so, um, TC goes on a tirade, okay? Like, it is disgust. He says some of the most disgusting things I've ever heard anybody say on this show, and it was really jarring coming from another Black man's mouth. It, it was, it harkens back to the way Eve was treating Chad when he showed up to Harmony. Yeah. And he cites that. He's like, we, I should have I should have listened to Eve. Eve was right all along. Like, you're a bad influence. So let, let's talk about it. So, because okay. I wrote it basically all down. So Simone's like standing up for Chad saying, um, you know, he saved Whitney's life. He even took a bullet for mom. And then TC says, 
Simone, it was all an act. Chad used his little fake heroics uh, to get us to trust him. And do what do we even know about him? Nothing, nothing at all. What do you mean you don't know anything about him? You've known right. him like several years at this point. It's episode 600 something. And yeah, he and he's done so much to prove himself. And like, it's just ridiculous. And um, yeah, I agree, basically. He's he says Chad ain't nothing but a punk from the streets of LA. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then he goes on. I mean, y'all, he was not, he did not stop. He just went on and on. He says, uh, he drifted into harmony and found a family that was trusting and foolish enough to take him in. That and was I was like, why would anyone go to the such great lengths to like fool you into hooking up with their daughter? No one cares enough to do that. Like it's no not even gratifying enough to do that like it is nonsense a couple of things too chad is a ladies man right like we've seen there's several girls who are interested in chad he he just likes whitney exactly. but he sure. could find another girl if he was just trying to be a scumbag he could do that yes. very easily right um chad then also interrupts him saying oh yeah uh i always my my motto is always be willing to get shot for food right like <laughs> He's like, yeah, y'all fed me. You think that you think that I got shot so y'all would give me a couple of pop tarts? Like Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um TC tells him, shut up, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> and he just continues on this crazy tirade. He says, yeah. uh, you took advantage of us. You took advantage of all this of our circumstances, but uh wait, took advantage of all the circumstances. Eh, whatever yeah you took advantage of us you took advantage of all the circumstances but your true colors came out see simone this is how they do it in the street oh my god it's like no it isn't it is not how they do it on the street what are you talking about see, it's simone. So, yeah the the people that write for passions are just horrible like i feel like that's what we're hearing this is how they do it on the streets huh? can you elaborate tc please he can't because he doesn't know anything about the streets. No. He said, this is how they do it on the streets. These uh they these punks, they don't have any morals or any values, but it ain't gonna happen in my house. No way in hell. And this is the moment when Whitney sobers up. Yeah. She's like, <sighs> What? <laughs> Perfectly fine. Like yeah. she should be truthfully, Whitney should basically be knocked out for all of this. Like she should be asleep totally. at this point. Like yeah. as as messed up as she was. And again, the drugs, we we're not entirely sure what the drugs were. And I yeah. it seems like it must be like some kind of a made roofie. up drug. Yeah. Because it, it couldn't be a roofie because she'd be knocked out. Yeah. And she like she would be at this point kind of going in and out and like falling asleep and be asleep for quite a while, I think. Yeah. She would definitely not be just all of a sudden Whitney. Yeah. Well, and that's why I think last week, last week, me and Maria, like, thought it might be ecstasy. It could be Molly. It could be something like that because it made yeah. it so amorous. But also, yeah. when you're coming down from that, like, you don't just wake up. Like, you you go to bed. <laughs> yeah, 100%. There's a come down. You feel weird. You're not all of a sudden just completely sober. No, 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 yeah. no. Um, so anyway, she wakes up. She's She has sobered up. She's coming to her senses. And she's like, what's going on? I don't. What's going on? And and TC and uh, Eve tell her, you know, Chad was trying to take advantage of you. He got you drunk. And she says, I don't remember anything. And but she's like, no, I don't I don't think Chad would try to hurt me like that's. And so I appreciate that she at least said that much. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. This is when TC orders Chad to leave. Uh, cause Chad says to her, you know, I never did anything to hurt you. I hope you know that she, he's trying to talk directly to Whitney because his, her parents rightfully so are kind of forming a shield around her against yeah. him. Yep. Understandably so. Yeah. Um, but he kind of circumvents them and is like, I hope you know that I never tried to hurt you. I would never hurt you. Um, and Chad, TC's like, you need to get the hell out of my house. And I'm with TC. I don't say that often. That'll be the only time I ever say it probably. But I am with TC. You need to get the hell out of these people's house. Yeah. Especially after he, all that that yeah, man just said to you. Yeah, 100%. He's lucky that he's getting out with his skin. Like, he just has to leave right away. 100%. Yeah. Um, so, Whitney looks at TC at one point. She's like, Daddy, are you absolutely sure that Chad did the things that you're accusing him of? And TC says, let this be a lesson to you, honey. 
yeah, and you too, Simone. And he was like so mean to Simone. He's like, he was so soft and gentle with Whitney. Let this be a lesson to you, honey. And you too, Simone. I hope you listen. <laughs> like, That's how he always is with Simone. He's like that. Whitney's his favorite. Clearly. Yes. Um, you know, he says, this is what can happen when you get mixed up with the wrong sort of people. Um, and then after all the adults leave, listen, I can't be too mad at Whitney. Simone is very mad at Whitney. Simone's like ridiculous, I feel like. Yeah, Simone is ridiculous. Simone is delusional, right? That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. Simone just, is, yeah. She's delusional. She's not on planet Earth with us. Yeah. But I do understand I do understand the the level of emotion that she is having is just directed in the wrong direction. Yeah. Like something clearly is wrong. She she herself knew something was wrong, wrong with Whitney and something bad had happened to Whitney. She's the one that called her parents in the first place because she was yeah. scared that something bad was going to happen to Whitney because she was acting strangely. So she knows and now she sees that Whitney's like can't remember anything. You know, and Whitney herself is scared because that's a scary thing. Waking up and being like, what happened? Yeah, clearly been, having been drugged. I feel like that was a very unsisterly reaction. Like if my younger sister did that to me, I would feel betrayed. Like she should have my back before anyone else's. And her, she just constantly is doing that though. Like choosing Chad over Whitney and it sucks. Oh yeah. So Simone is pissed at Whitney. She yeah. says, because because Whitney's like, Simone, what happened? Why do I, why don't I remember anything? She's really upset. And Simone's like, yeah. forget about your sorry self. Uh, you turn mom and dad against Chad when you know he didn't do anything to you. Actually, she doesn't. She's literally telling you she doesn't remember what happened. Right. You, you know he didn't do anything to you. And then Simone says, you have, you should have defended Chad more. You know, I love him and he and I could have had something really wonderful, but you stole all that from me from happening. I hate you, Whitney. I hate you, Whitney. And Storm's yeah. ridiculous, absurd, absurd. Yeah. We, we have to take this point by point <laughs> and to talk about how, how incredibly delusional and absurd Simone is being in this moment number one I like what you said just a moment ago about like you're my sister you should be a little more sympathetic to me in my situation and have my back and shouldn't be choosing Chad over me and what yeah. happened to me but secondly like <laughs> we have the benefit of knowing that Simone does know and understand that Chad had nothing to do with, with what was wrong with Whitney right so, so I, I get the caveat that she knows that Chad did not do anything wrong. Like she knows it for a fact. And so how upset, upsetting it would be to have like this crush on this guy and everybody's accusing him of doing this horrible thing. But you know, yeah. that however, the level of anger, the level of vitriol she had for her own sister in this moment, who is telling her, I don't remember what happened. I feel like she took it as an excuse to like, and like to further her delusion like it gave her an out to be like we were about to fall in love and it's like you were not i'm so sorry but you weren't but she was like we almost had it all and it's like you did <laughs> <laughs> didn't we almost <laughs> have it all That's no not. no you didn't you did. you, sorry you did that yeah, it gave her an out to be like that yeah, I. that's point number three, is that she created this whole, like, Chad and I, we could have had something wonderful. You knew how much I loved him. And, girl, that's in your mind. That's all in your yeah. head. And Whitney yeah. knows that better than anybody. Yeah, that, sh that shows her being a better sister. Is she just won't say that to her. She won't be like, you're an idiot. Like, she's a good big sister on that point, I think. Oh, 100%. I think it... I do think they that Chad and Whitney both just let some yeah. illusion go too far. They should say something 100%. Yeah, they let it go too far. But it has been nice of Whitney to not say, like, actually, your boy, the, the guy you think is your boyfriend is in love with me. He doesn't even like you. He barely knows you exist. Yeah. 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 You're not dating. Sorry. Yeah, y'all are not together, babe. Okay. <clears throat> so th this girl has stormed out after telling her sister, who just has been drugged and has right. been going through this ordeal telling her she hates her um so then sam 
and grace leave and this is only important this isn't even that important but i'm gonna say it because it's in my notes sam and grace leave and when they're like walking somewhere else sam questions grace about eve's connection to julian because um when sam yeah. and tc came in they heard yeah. chad saying why'd you call me mr why'd you call me julian right so and he had put this and this together and was like being a cop and he was like yeah he he asked her basically to spill her beans and she was like please don't make me do that and he was like i'm not gonna pressure you but and then he like pressured her to to tell him yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, and he basically realizes, I don't think she even really says it out loud, yeah, if I remember correctly. Implied. He just, he says it and it's implied that she basically... She doesn't deny it. She does a grace thing and she's just like, please don't make me say it, Sam. And he's like, okay, so it is true. And she's like, please don't make me say it. Like, she just basically says it in her grace way. Yeah. So Sam has put two and one and one and one together to make two. Uh, TC has put one and one together to make 17. Zero yeah okay <laughs> like <laughs> he he asks eve the same question why did chad call why did chad say you were calling him julian why would you call chad julian and but he pulled ethan. yeah yeah oh Before yeah she can say anything tc is like the word tc and ethan are both like this they both well all the men in this yeah, show do they, they all are like that exactly yeah but um tc and ethan are both like particularly bad about it um tc before she can even answer say anything he's like oh i know it's because he was acting like a pig just like julian okay <laughs> well right. and he, he the it is really wrapped up neatly the way he says it he, like he's correct he's like and he drugged her just like julian would have drugged someone and drugged Teresa. it's like yeah i guess that makes sense it does make <laughs> sense and it gives even out like she's like okay sure. <laughs> that's true <laughs> It, it, I mean, yeah, it does make sense. I guess he he did he just had to do so many like quantum leaps. I feel like, yeah, like... <laughs> yes, but he did it really neatly. So that was you could just be like, uh huh. And so later on, we're almost at the end of this little storyline. TC is walking around wearing an NYPD t shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, and spying on his wife as she sleeps. <laughs> so weird he it comes was. back in his room he's like all right all the windows are locked and then he notices that eve is actually asleep and he like does the thing that you know a lot of the men in this show do where they kind of like hover over a sleeping woman and watch her just like yeah yeah as he's dreaming yeah it's yeah weird watches her while she's sleeping i think i told this story on the podcast one time but there was a guy that i was seeing yeah about. you did yeah. and you i woke up woke up to him staring at you he had to go. <laughs> that's so weird. It's like this. That's that. Um, that's him being influenced by this kind of television and shit. Thinking that's normal. It's like it's not. Like what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Who wants to be watched in their when they're in their most when vulnerable like, position? Uh, you know, you're, that, I'm not like my most vulnerable in. as I'm like, sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. I watched during that. I'm probably I look I'm, that good. Yeah. And I'm probably snoring. I'm probably like, yeah, I look <laughs> I look my worst, probably. And the I'm potential. vulnerable. I don't know. It just feels it just feels particularly like creepy because especially I don't know. I know some people are like light sleepers. I am not. I'm a very heavy sleeper. So truthfully, you could be doing anything. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like you're, I feel like it's like you don't have the consent to be interacting with me. I guess technically because we're like sharing a bed, we're interacting. But like, I think it's, if I woke up to that, I'd be totally weirded out. 100%. So uh, Eve's weird husband is <laughs> hovering over her. <laughs> yeah. He actually she, was kind of nice, though. I felt like he was, he seemed nice. He was like, oh, I understand. I like, I love you so much. And <laughs> no, because my issue with TC and his narrative around Eve of, of her being like this perfect woman perfect. It almost sounds like that if she wasn't what he considers to be perfect that he wouldn't love her anymore which is why i kind of understand why eve is so crazy about keeping her secrets that's exactly right the way he was describing whitney he was like she was like i forget the wording exactly but he basically like based on her just like dancing a little bit with a guy and like being a little bit sexual overtly like he was like she was a whore like i'm glad like it was just horribly 
extreme. And I thought when I was watching it, I was like, no wonder Eve has this vibe that she should keep this under wraps. Like he's the one putting that pressure on her to not talk about anything yeah. that she did. Which yeah. Which wasn't that weird from the flashbacks. It really wasn't even that weird. I get that Julian's gross, but like they just like took some pictures kind of and like slept together. It's like not I that. I think I think for Eve the big the bigger part is that well, there's a couple of caveats. The yeah. there is like the whole like virginal version of her, right? That yeah. I think she I think TC believed that she was basically a virgin when they met. Wait, and to, okay. To me, that's not that big of a deal, right? But there are people like TC, men, yeah. men like TC who and imagine you know what? I'm not gonna put it just on TC because Eve has internalized that as well. Right. She's playing that narrative too, hundred percent. Yeah. And so um so there's like that portion i think for eve the baby is a big big part of it like that's a big secret to keep yeah it um, is it's not it i don't believe she has to tell him i mean there the baby doesn't exist as far as she knows anymore yeah so yeah. so i don't think that she necessarily it uh, is obligated to tell him about it but I can also see the other, the flip side of that argument where other people might be like, how could you? Yeah. 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 Actually, Children. we're married. How do, how do I not know this about you? Right. Yeah. I also think it's the fact that it's Julian and he has weird beef with Julian. Oh, 100%. Probably That's the biggest. The biggest. That is the, definitely the biggest chunk of it. That is just, just it happens to be Julian, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Eve is having this dream and I am not entirely sure if these are events that actually happened or if it's a dream. They, if they were events that actually happened, they were. that's what I was referring to, how like PG they were. Like she was doing a photo shoot and she was like, kind of showing like a little bit of her negligee and it was oh, like, yeah. oh, oh her, yeah. her, her floor length gown right. that she was yeah. wearing. Yes. It's like, oh no. And, and but, with a robe over and she just like gave a peekaboo right her boobs but and not her boobs one, well, yeah he took a shot exactly but yeah. whatever i i think i've always just assumed that the, it did go further and there was like a lot more and they only show really us scary. those portions okay i don't know that's what i that's what i decided for myself because it because she does she well also i will say back when they did like the bird statue stuff those pictures were a lot m more risque than what we just saw in these episodes yeah yep yeah to the point that ivy had like parts of it like blacked out okay he was just so creepy about it so it doesn't even matter if what they were doing was normal it's like he was disgusting about it so that's i think where the shame comes in for eve that's what yeah. it feels like me. yeah there's a lot of shame around just the fact that Ju Ju it was julian in the first place and that he she managed to be taken advantage of to like that her na naiet no oh, lord naiete. Naiete. thank I you <laughs> Can, I didn't say it, right. it doesn't matter i barely said it right um that he took adv advantage of that and i think get the drugs was a big part of the alcohol that portion of it is also part of her shame that she ever yeah. partook in any of that i think her kids would respect her more if she was honest with them about it me too it would make them feel less restrained i also think that they're less likely to do it right like she thinks they're under the uh she's under this um uh, understanding that if they knew this about her then they'll go out and do the same things it's like she's giving them a green light but she's a cautionary tale she could tell them the truth yeah it makes it it also just makes the entire human experience more um okay like it just like kids are less likely to rebel against something that they feel chiller about i don't know how to say it right yeah, I, I agree that that you haven't made a big deal about it, right? right. Like the parent, <laughs> if you're rebelling, why would you rebel in a way that you know your parents will be understanding of? about yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Okay. So she has this dream. She in in her dream she starts to fight with Julian, and mm -hmm. so outside of her dream she starts to say Julian's name, and she's like, "Stop, Julian! Get away! No, Julian!" Of course. Like, why are you why is Julian in your dreams? Yeah, why is Julian in her dreams? Like, why does it, is a dragon in my dreams? I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't wait right. to it, TC. 
So she wakes up. He asks questions her about like what's going on. Why was she swinging at Julian um in her dreams? And TC again is like, wait a minute, I know what's going on. And he says, you were dreaming about my issue with Julian. Shut up. Just yeah. shut up. Yep. Go to bed. Go to bed. I'm I'm sick of TC. Um, and then he says something about Julian turning out terrible, but he never had a chance because it's in his genes. Look at his father, and and Eve like flips out. She's like, "I don't believe that. I don't believe that a child is doomed to to repeat their parents' um mistakes." And TC's like, "Calm down. I was just saying that he was raised a certain way, so that of course that's why he acted the way that he acts." And he's like, but, "Right." He's like, "I just hope that our girls." will turn out just like you, beautiful Perfect. inside and out. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. He sucks. She's what? like, I have to not to say that shit, but he just keeps doing it. Yeah. So that's all I have with the t Chad and Whitney stuff. Do you got anything to add to that? No, as I on? said, it was the thing that I like was like the most cringed out by it, and I like tried to just kind of skip past it. I was more focused on the other storylines for sure. Yeah. I yeah agreed. I well I like I, like I said I did like the parts where we were getting at least getting something of Chad and Whitney. But once we got to like the yeah. Tasty and Eve stuff, I was like, okay, yeah. I barely took notes. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move on to magic, y'all, because yeah, typically y'all might notice that things are a little the order's a little wacky because typically I'll do like the faded couples together, right? Like Teresa and Ethan, Chad and Whitney will do all that stuff at the same time. However, today uh, we have to do magic so we can go into Teresa's storyline because Lord Teresa, bless her heart. Mm, well, she can't be blessed. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, she's, she's made a literal deal with the devil. <laughs> literal that was the craziest shit ever i love that demon so much i almost found him mildly attractive but I was, i'm into it i'm into it more than i am into like tc so oh yeah i was wondering i honestly when i was looking at the demon yeah. like, like the devil so i was I, wondering who that was because i it's i think it might have been one of the guys from the i show. felt like it was ethan that's me who too. i thought it was me yeah. too yeah me Something too about it but it's like I don't know what about it. And I couldn't find it. I Googled it and I couldn't find uh, it. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I need to look it up, but maybe there's no <laughs> they, way to find out. Pay someone else random. They already have them on the payroll. So right. they just, yeah. And we've seen them do that before where, um, uh, like when the demons in hell at one point were like different people from the show and, um, you could tell, you could see it through the makeup. Yeah. Um, and there was something. To, oh, and I mean, they did all the Puritan stuff, and all of those people were just like right in like, the history. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's talk about magic. Let's talk about what's going on with the our charity? zombie charity. Yeah. So we remember, y'all. We are inside this cave with Tabitha and Timmy. Uh, zombie charity has like made herself into goo and escaped the cave, and she's yeah. in a puddle outside talking to Kay. So inside the cave, real charity is melting rapidly. Okay. Like the ice yeah. the block of ice that she's in is rapidly melting. Her like little heart is like melting shit and beating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and this week we get a lot of Tabitha and Timmy just telling us the things that we are already seeing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just telling us what we already see. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, uh, zombie Charity is outside and she's having a conversation with Kay inside of a puddle. A puddle. <laughs> and Kay's like, you need to get out of there. What are you doing? And that's when Miguel walks over and so I was crazy. shocked. I was surprised. I thought for sure that Miguel would not see Charity in this puddle. Same. And I also thought, like, not to skip ahead, but like when they uh, the other people saw it. I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought they're going to be like, "What are you talking about?" They 100%. all saw it, which is insane. And the they fact all saw it. That zombie charities like uh, spin on it is ridiculous. Like it's like, yeah, she was in the tree. Like I don't know. I don't know. It didn't feel like that to me. It makes no sense. But it does. Miguel sees her in the puddle, and he looks at Kay and says, "What's going on here, Kay? What's happening?" If I'm like, Kate, yeah, I'm Kate's Kate's like, the I, moment I would immediately be like, 
I just saw it before you saw it. That doesn't mean I know anything about it, right? Of course. No, of course. Well, that's kind of what she does. She doesn't, well, she is a little freaked out, I guess, but she does play it off pretty good, I think. To me, she was acting a little too nervous. <laughs> like They can I, never read each other's emotions, though. So I guess I yeah. didn't think anything of it. Miguel's that's true. Always gonna be like, Great, Kay. Thanks, Kay. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So he asked her, why is Charity's face in a pool of water? She can't, she can't answer that. That What kind of question is that? Sam and TC show up. They also immediately see Charity's face in the pool of water. They're like, oh my God, yeah, I see her there too. Yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kay tells Zombie Charity once those guys, I don't know where they go off to. They walk away from Kay for a moment. But like, she has the opportunity to talk to the puddle for a while. And they reference that. They're like, Kay's talking to the puddle. It's like so awkward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the hell, Kay? Yep. Yeah. Um, she tells Zombie Charity, get lost. They they obviously can see you. You need to get out of here. So the puddle like drains away. Yeah. And uh, Mik Miguel then tells everyone, because now like the other kids I think have shown up too. Yeah. Tells them uh, that he saw Kay talking to that puddle when he walked up. Right. <laughs> Way to make her look bad. And again, Kay's like, what? what? I don't, what? She's trying to, trying to feign ignorance. But they are interrupted by this devious laughter and the laughter really? yes yeah very. yeah it was very devious very creepy laughter just coming from the trees and yeah. it's like what is that what is that and it turns out to be charity up in a tree zombie charity is up in a tree yeah. Um, and she starts laughing. She says, ha, 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 ha. It was so funny watching you all run around like chickens with your heads cut off, looking for little old me. Um, Such a psycho. And, yeah. And she tells them, you know, because um, Miguel's like, wait, how'd you get up in that tree? You were in the cave. And she was like, ha, ha, ha. I was never in that cave. I was just throwing my voice into the cave just to trick you. And he's like, why would you do that? And she's like... <laughs> She's like, just because I can. And then she basically calls him an idiot, says, you know, yes. oh, Miguel, I was never behind that rock wall. You're so stupid. You're a little thick. I think she calls him thick. She calls him dumb several times in these episodes, which I thought was funny. Yeah. And, and she, well, and she's not wrong. He is an idiot. So um, dumb. And then she says it was a practical joke. Everybody's upset and angry with her. Rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they question her about the puddle. I'm like, wait a minute. But we saw your face in the puddle. How could we have seen that? And she's like, oh, it was just my reflection. <laughs> what? She was like, like a stoic portrait. Like the reflection wouldn't have made sense. You would have seen her as a reflection up. Like it just wouldn't have made sense. But they all bought it. So The tree she was in was not over that puddle. It didn't also look like she was from a tree. She was standing like this, like. It was just not believable. I actually was kind of impressed with Miguel. I feel like he kind of pushed it together and like was like, this is evil magic. And I was like, yes, thank you. I can't believe you. Yeah, he like, literally says that. He was like, this is more than a practical joke. It's magic. How did you do it, Charity? Um, yeah. Because they, when they question her about the puddle. But again, yeah. she says it was just her reflection. And then she yeah. also explains that she was just throwing her voice behind the rock wall. And then they asked, I think Reese was like, well, what about the lights? What about the lights from earlier? And she was like, oh, it was just my flashlight. I had my flashlight. And they're like, where is it now? She's like, I threw it away. Why? Wouldn't that have been, wouldn't that have tipped you off so hard? I would have uh, grilled her farther on that. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, what do you mean you threw it away? Like, why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, threw it, threw it away I where? Where is it? Neither did the perfume story make any sense. Like, why would you? It was just very strange. She had a very neat answer for everything, and which sounds sketchy. Yeah, it was. The thing is, Charity, as I've been saying for many, many episodes now, Charity, if you're just looking at her, we take away the magic. We take away, like, the, that she really has been experiencing these, like, crazy um, paranormal yeah. things. She just seems yeah. like a crazy girl, right? Yeah, a lot. And She's so. A lot. And so now, because they have set up that she just kind of seems like a crazy girl, now it just seems like she's being a crazy girl just in a new way. A new, yeah, she, exciting she, way. Like, yeah, she's a psycho. And, like, basically, like, maybe was pretending the whole time, which actually would make sense because it's so insane what she was doing that, like, how is this even that far removed? Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, they all just decide this is the truth. They go on about their lives. We all move in different directions, except so Ch Zombie Charity, Kay are ready to leave. And Miguel's yeah. like, no, we're not going anywhere until I get some answers. I'm staying right here. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and so Kay tries to get Miguel to like leave. She's like, you know, you're not going to get any answers out of her. She's not being very nice. Like we should just leave. It's cold. Um, Charity says, yeah, what answers do you want? You just can't take the, you just can't take a joke. Number one. And, uh, she says in the words of the great Martin Lawrence, and she stops short and they're like, don't you dare. Like. I don't know. It was it was the level of like pearl clutching with her about to say the word fuck. That yeah, <laughs> correct. No, me. it was it was very a reference of that time period too. I had to Google it. I had to be like, what are you talking about? I just went. I knew she was trying to say fuck you, but then decided to say forget you. you I don't know when my say that. It's like chill. Yeah, but that don't you kind of relate to zombie charity? I mean, a little bit. Like just being like you're I such. Like yeah, you're such a wet blanket. Like, it's just like, yeah. I like her, honestly. I, I mean, I get it. Listen, let's be like clear. Me, Timmy, and that's pretty much it. That's really my only problem with her. Yeah, she is so mean to Timmy. But and that's I really actually it. I actually do like her too. Yeah, I. but see, that's the thing. I like most of the villains, right? Like, yeah. I, I enjoy them. Like, even like Rebecca, I enjoy watching Rebecca work. Yeah. right yeah. like I don't like her tactics I don't like the, a lot of the things that she says but as far as watching her on TV like watching the story unfold and how dynamic she is as a character I enjoy yeah. it so I feel the same way about zombie zombie charity she's bringing in so much material yeah. that it's enjoyable to watch yeah I I, I, I kind of like her and and I don't like Miguel very much so I kind of like seeing him get hurt I, I know yeah. that's mean no it's not it really isn't because he's like in his own weird politically correct way like is a, not abusive but like he's just as evil in a weirder more tame way like I feel like he is manipulative and gaslighty I love that he keeps saying that um Kay is in love with Reese like he's like you we all know you love Reese it's like what gives you that impression Miguel and just like how uh, possessive he is with charity is weird i think yeah we're about to get to it i wrote in my notes how annoying and how much i can't stand miguel um in the things that he says so anyway uh he miguel grabs zombie charity after she's like forget you and she's trying to walk off he grabs yeah. her and he tells her you know we we have lots to talk about and uh, you're not going to leave here until you answer my questions. She tells him, listen, there's no questions to answer. I'm tired of your prim and proper routine. It's boring, just like you. She calls him boring. She's trying to leave. Kay tries to get him to leave. He just refuses um, to go anywhere. He continues to like badger uh, ch zombie charity. And he's like, no, I want my answers now. And he's like, I want to get to the bottom of things now. And then Kay says, she's trying to be like, you know, charitable to towards charity, right? And she says, yeah. well, maybe charity just, uh, maybe she just needs some time to chill out and get in touch with her own feelings. Maybe we should give her some space. And this was great. Zombie charity goes, oh, that's nice, Kay. But I know you're out for yourself and no one else. And Kay is like, what are you talking about? She says, admit it. You're just trying to get him, get Miguel away from me because you want to be alone with him because you are madly, deeply head over heels in love with him and always have been, right? So she, yeah. blows, she kind of, in a way, she blows up Kay's spot. Of course. But but she in does. another way, she didn't because Kay has confessed her love to Miguel no less than three times. Yeah, that's true. Also, it just it gives Kay a, an out for her own like thing. Like it, it's like saying the thing out front out right so that then she can deny it um, as a a second party or something. Yeah, zombie. The zombie actually did her a favor, but it upsets Kay. It legitimately. was weird. That you betrayed her creator like that like 
Well, we we're learning that she's more than just Kay's zombie, right? Like, yeah, now, absolutely. She has she, her own evil agenda. She has her own evil agenda. She last week we learned that she actually has been um, tapped by the the friends in the basement. The underworld guys have been. They gave her Tabitha's powers and Tabitha's old job. That's what that. That's how they phrased it last week. So yeah. basically, it's her new job to bring pain and suffering to harmony. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, Kay brought her in, but she, she has her, her own life of her own. She's leaving Kay in the dust. She, you yeah. know, but she actually kind of did Kay a favor, to be honest. She, she still, that, what she did for Kay just now only is going to make um, Miguel more sympathetic towards her, which we see coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, uh, Kay runs off because she is embarrassed. And I get that. I kind of get that. Even though she's already confessed her love to this boy multiple times. She's not embarrassed. Her cover was just blown 100%. So she's like, shit, and just doesn't know what to say and then runs off. That's about it. Yeah. And so, oh, God, I cannot stand Miguel. So Miguel sa says to Charity, like, you're being so mean. And then he goes off to like find, um, Kay. And, uh, when he catches up with Kay, I he's so annoying. He's like, uh Kay, Kay, oh, oh, actually, before he catches up with Kay, in that whole little thing, he says, like, oh, what are you talking about? Kay's in love with Reese, which you already said, but I just yeah. want to talk about it for a second. I am so sick of that fucking line. I me am too. sick to death of the what are you talking about? Kay loves Reese. Okay, I already know that you don't love me, you love Reese. You have been given zero indication that she is in love with Reese. They haven't dated, like, at all. They you, haven't been at all. Like, it's weird. You have every reason to believe that she's in love with you. And she, no reason to believe that she's in love with Reese. It doesn't. Yeah. He, I'm so sick to death of that because it feels like a cop out. It feels like Reese, I'm not Reese. It feels like Miguel says and invokes Reese's name anytime he feels like, Oh, I have to make sure and make make a clear separation between me and Kay. Yep. Yes. But Instead then of just being honest with her. Things. Right. But he says then other things like that imply that they're getting closer and like he says things and does things that imply that they are have a special connection. And then he's like, but we're just like chill and you love Reese and we all know that. And I would die for charity. But yeah. I hate charity and like <laughs> yeah. So Miguel, after Charity does say all those mean things to Kay and out, basically outs her, um, Miguel says, Charity, how could you be so cruel? What's happened to you? And she says, I guess I've changed. And she walks away. Yeah. Fair enough. And yeah. then uh, Miguel then hears Charity's voice calling out to him, Miguel, yeah. Miguel, because inside the cave, Charity yeah. has pretty much completely thawed out. She's still kind of like asleep. So she's calling out his name in her sleep. Unconsciously, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Miguel's like, what was that? Where is that coming from? And so zombie Charity <laughs> starts giggling because Tabitha, inside the cave, Tabitha like muffles, puts her hand yeah, over, right. over Charity's, yeah. real Charity's mouth so she can't make noise. And so Zombie Charity says, oh, I was just throwing my voice again. And Miguel's like, why would you do that? And she's like, because you're so gullible and you fall for it every time. <laughs> like you just did again. Yeah. He's like, oh, fine. And he he goes off. He's like, I'm going to go find Kay. You, what you said to her really hurt really her. Really hurt her. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. So Zombie Charity goes back into the cave and she finds that real Charity has pretty much become unthawed right yeah. and then she bickers with timmy and tabitha a little bit even though it's like the, there's a pressing issue here we need to take care of what's going on with charity like blow some ice back on her something which she does eventually eventually but she's like bickering with timmy and tabitha um and then charity is like fully released and the rock wall like comes crumbling down yeah. yep Charity wakes up. She sees Timmy and Tabitha. She's like, what's going on here? And then she sees the zombie. And she's like, I know what you are. I know who you are. And I know what you're up to. You're trying to destroy what Miguel and I have. But you won't get away with it. True love conquers all. <laughs> Look at what true love can do. We get, honestly, 
But the powers, okay, so the evil powers are like legit powers. She can like make shit come out of her hands and stuff. And then Charity is like, I'm going to call on the powers of love. And she literally is just like, Miguel, Miguel. And she doesn't have any powers. It makes love look pretty weak, basically, and unmagical. What drove me crazy about this is exactly what you just said, which is that the zombie is like using her real powers, right? Her dark side powers. Yeah. She says she's going to call on the, po the power of love. She just starts screaming Miguel's name. And then... I think about the fact that this girl literally had talked to the trees and willed the storm of the century to stop. She knows she has powers. Yeah. Try, try. She didn't yeah. even try. And that, yeah. and, that's, and that is why we prefer zombie charity zombie to regular charity. charity. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because she didn't even try. She just called for Miguel. What's Miguel supposed to do? Yeah. And it's not even calling on the powers of love. It's literally just calling on the person you love. Like, it's not the same thing. Also, I don't know if you're going to get to it, but how funny was it? I didn't, I wrote it down when, when zombie charity says, um, I, I summon the powers of, of darkness. She says the powers of darkness, I summon you. And Timmy is like, Tabby, that's your line. And Tabitha says, I've been plagiarized. And she says it so seriously. It's just hilarious. Yeah. Love that was funny. That was funny. I, I, I do love the little side uh, conversations that Timmy and Tabitha have. I don't ever, I rarely write them down because they're not that important, but I love when other people bring them up. So I appreciate it was, that. So it was like beyond goofy, but she said it with 100% seriousness, which is why <laughs> I've been plagiarized, Timmy. It's like, oh no. Yeah. yeah. So she's, she's called, this girl's calling on Miguel. She then, she also like at one point, um, realizes that Timmy and Tabitha are there and Timmy explains like Timmy's a real boy now and Timmy's good and Tabitha's like actually I'm on her side <laughs> actually I'm on the, yeah. the bad side so Tabitha yeah. has to like go around the cave to go stand on the same side with zombie charity uh goodness will prevail no it won't because the zombie shoots charity down with red lightning uh and Timmy wants to help charity but he what can he do you know uh and at one point, zombie charity pretends like the power of goodness is like taking her over and she's like, getting yeah, weak. she's like, yeah, oh, you've done it. I'm so weak. You've done it. And uh, uh, then she's faking it. And then, yeah. she, and then she zaps charity again and puts her back in the ice. Right. Like, Which but before uh, the interesting thing, though. One interesting thing that did happen is that Timmy had a little conversation with Charity before Charity like goes back into the ice. He yeah. does tell her that an angel, he's going to try yeah. and call in an angel to help her and that the angel mm -hmm. told him that their two, their lives are intertwined. And so as she's being like encased in the ice again, she's screaming out for help and she actually screams for Timmy to help her, which yeah. I thought was really interesting. It was obviously deliberate. And I, I really, honestly, I really liked it. It was, it was nice to hear a different name coming out of her mouth for a change. Yeah. And so also it validates Timmy, which he, and he's right. It does. They are intertwined. It's adorable. Yeah. yeah. So she's back on ice. Our girl's back on ice. Well, somebody's girl, not my girl. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so then the zombie decides to zap herself back out of the cave. She says, I'm going to go have some fun. And she leaves Timmy and Tabitha inside to watch all the events unfold on a little piece of magical ice. So they're watching yeah. ice television. Yes. So now let's talk about what's going on with Kay and Miguel. So Kay has like run off. Miguel is coming to catch up with her. Uh, Kay is regretting her yeah. regrettable decision yeah uh, to put her real cousin on ice and to make this zombie and she's trying to figure out how to stop things before they get worse because she sees the writing on the wall and it's crazy because girl we did this before you did all of this shit with he hecuba before right yeah. like you you knew the consequences you knew but you're the one that was like consequences be damned i'll never be good again right and now you That's Point, she's like um she's like it's not like i brought a monster into this world or something and it's like you literally did that like literally a literal um, demon she's unaware of what she did i guess yeah but, yeah so she's contemplating telling miguel the truth so they can put a stop <laughs> to all of this so right. you know we can give our girl a little bit of you know all right she's thinking about doing the right thing 
Miguel then catches up with her. And like I said, she's ready to come clean. She's like, Miguel, I have to tell you something. And Miguel interrupts her and is like, I already know what it is. You want to talk to me about what Charity said? Um, and he says, yeah. but there's no need. I'm not going to pay any attention to what Charity said about you being in love with me because yeah, sure, we love each other as friends, but for her to take that and twist it all around, she was just wrong. And then he says, I'm sorry, Charity hurt you, Kay. Which I loved that line. I love that line because Kay's the one doing all the hurting, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. I loved it though. And it's funny because Ch when Kay heard him say that, she also loved hearing that, right? Like, well, yeah. Because it means that he she's uh, getting away with it. Yeah, it's working, right? It's yeah. working. And yeah. then he goes, I can't believe your own cousin would turn on you like that. It's, it's just so, like, perfect because that's what she's doing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. And, but Kay does try to tell him the truth again, to her credit. She starts to try and tell him again, like, I, Miguel, like, there's there's more you don't understand and uh miguel of course interrupts her again and he says don't try to excuse what what she's done and don't think that i will ever ever let her come between what we have oh what we have you won't oh okay also she, like he already has like a hundred times let charity come between what they have he's he, just so foolish that <laughs> he was ready to let K die. Oh, y'all didn't think I remember, did you? You didn't think I was ever going to bring it up. He was ready to let K die all because Charity was off in the distance somewhere calling his name. She was yeah. hanging from her fingertips about to fall into a pit. Yep. And he and was like, we don't have time to save K. We have to find Charity. You don't even know where Charity is. The, you can save K. Your right friend there. is right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I won't for I'll never forget. I listen. Okay, I cannot stand okay. Miguel. And there there are like different there are different things um that each character does that makes me say, "Oh, this is like unforgivable unforgivable. This is like one of the like main things that I will always remember that this character did." Right? Like yeah. Eve like Eve burning down Orville's apartment <laughs> or yeah. um the latest one is Ivy drugging yeah. drugging Whitney. Like there yeah. are these things that is one of the things that I will always remember about Miguel is that he was ready to let Kay die. Especially because he evokes their strong bond and like how much they love each other so frequently. But it's only when it's convenient for Miguel, really. Yeah, he sucks. And yeah. so <laughs> he, um, oh God, he sucks so much. Later on, he does some shit that also sucks in the Teresa storyline. He <laughs> is so neglectful with Teresa. <laughs> we'll talk about that though in a second. Yeah, we will talk about it. So because we're actually getting to that portion of the show. Um, so yeah, K he tells Kay, she'll, I'll never let charity come between what you and I have. And so Kay is actually, you know, this lifts her spirit and then she rethinks telling him the truth. And he says, I'll always be here for you. And um, he says, in fact, I don't think I've ever felt as close to you as I do right now. Not even the time when you kissed her, those times when you kissed her with yeah. tongue. Yes, we remember Miguel. But the she Lord loves, remembers. She loves it though. So Yeah, she yeah, she's eating it up. She's eating it yeah. up. Yeah. This girl really needs some some therapy. So she needs to grow some self-worth and self-esteem. Um yeah. so she yes, yeah, she's eating it up. She's so happy she decides not to tell the truth. And honestly, I can't blame her for it. He yeah. she's gotten what yeah. she wants. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, Kay and Miguel go for a walk, right? And um, they talk about charity and Miguel does say, you know, with all the things that have been happening with all the couples, with my brother and Sheridan, with Teresa and Ethan, yeah. now me and charity, I do think maybe some evil has come to harmony. So, you know, yeah. there's one for Miguel. Mm -hmm. There's one for Miguel. He says, maybe evil has come to harmony and is wreaking havoc on people's relationships. Um, and so they go on the walk and they encounter Teresa. So let's talk about what's going on with Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald, my lovable lunatic. There she is. Oh, that's a, oh, I love the angry one. Yeah, yeah me too. The the Teresa stuff was like hard to watch. She, it was so pathetic. Oh, I cried. 
Did you? Mm -hmm. I did not feel that way at all. I felt like it was so. No, I, you know what? I cried, but I've had a lot of like people die recently. Right. So in, in, and so there, I will talk about it when we get there, but I I did, I did tear up. I did cry later on in the week. It's like ridiculous, but the early, the stuff, like when she hugged, she and Miguel hug each other. Yeah. That's when I, I was like, cause I knew what was happening, you know? Yeah. And I'm actually did. tearing up thinking about it again. Oh, okay. Um, you mean so, that. and I told myself, cause I cried during the episodes and I was like, Tara, you're not going to cry. You, you did it now. You're not going to do it when you record. It's fine. Um, okay. So let's talk about what's going on with Teresa. Teresa is standing in her dark living room, ruminating on where things went wrong with Ethan, uh, and the events Having of their relationship. Fun. Say that again having montages of like them together and yeah Yeah. it was it reminded me of being like it reminded me of that time period and just like being emo and like listening to music and being like way over the top being like (laughs) I don't know I I did kind of really listen there was a day (laughs) that I remember so clearly in my mind where my parents literally thought that so I was like they were something was really 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 wrong with me because i was blasting lincoln park in my lincoln room park. oh my god in the dark and i was like i've become so numb i can't feel oh, like you my- there yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah all and they that, really thought something that. was very wrong with me i could see why yeah that and kind I- of music from that time period though was so like it really just made like pain seem so beautiful and yeah <laughs> Yeah, like a like a noble thing to be experiencing. Yeah. yeah. So Teresa is in her little emo phase. She's having she's you know, she's she's going through it. And to be fair, we have to remember Teresa is 18 years old thereabout, right? Yeah. And, and she's so dead. I had to put myself in her shoes and in her where where she is in her life and where I was. I had to think about like, well, how did I feel at 18? If and you know, I didn't even have half the stuff that has happened to her happen to me. You right? didn't have like, the love of your life come into your life, almost get married to that person. And then what happened with her and Julian is so dark. And like then she had to just bear the brunt of like she had to like accept the guilt of that, even though it wasn't really her fault. And she so she's like in her room or not her room, she's in her house just basically being like, This is my fault, and I've like lost this person. She's very dramatic. She says she died. Yeah. I mean, she keeps talking. She talks to her mom. Pilar comes in is like, you know, are you okay? And Teresa's yeah. like, you know, mother, ma- mama, I'm, I'm, I died. I have died. Yeah. She's like, my life just flashed before my eyes. I just saw everything that has happened in my relationship with Ethan. And that's what happens when you die. And so I'm dead. So I'm dead, which was a weird line, you know, because it'd be one thing to be like, I, I feel, I feel I, yeah I feel like I'm di- I've died. flashing before her eye, she was like well I must be dead now because <laughs> I had this thing happen it's like that's not how it works but that's yeah okay. and so uh Pilar comes in she tries to comfort her daughter um she then this is not important but I'm gonna say it anyway she shows her that necklace from Antonio that Antonio left when he broke into her home and then just ran away and out the wall <laughs> yeah and uh because she found it under her yeah, nightstand her it had fallen and she found it and yeah. she tells Teresa see Antonio was here and Teresa tells her not to get her hopes up she's like you know maybe maybe Tia Christina left it here maybe somebody else you know when during the wedding time there was a lot of people in and out of the house so yeah. like it could be belong to anybody it could be also old, she said. Like, it could be his thing from a long time ago. Yeah. Which is all true. It's very, yeah. it's true. Yeah. And um, she then says to her mom, she says, I used to believe in dreams, mama, but not anymore. <laughs> Poor baby. And that's when she says she's dead and all of that. Then they talk about Julian being a horrible person and that, like, he died this Yes. Life. He died the death that he deserved. <laughs> but they were basically, didn't it sound like they were, like confessing that they did it i mean they play with that with all the characters but the two of them talking it legit seemed like they're both like we killed him like that yeah 
Basically, they that. they say that he died in a justifiable homicide, right? Yeah, like they like they talk about it. They agreed not to talk about exactly how he died, but they were like in on it together. Yeah, and they say oh, a horrible a horrible death for a horrible man, and it's interesting because like how would you know he had a horrible death unless you were there? Yeah, right. They imply that they did it a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so then they just recap um, Ivy and Rebecca's part in all of this and in the demise of Teresa's relationship. Um, and we get recap about what happened with Julian on the island. We do not need to talk about. But then she talks about how what happened in Bermuda cost her her life. That's and that's yeah. the important portion of this. Um, recap, recap, recap. She's talking about all, this is my fault. All of the lies that I told and. And she talks about the reasons that she told the lies. And then she makes a comment about how she can't live with what has happened to her. I can't live yeah. with, this, with the weight of this. And she tell, and it, it becomes very clear and apparent very, that Teresa yeah. is suicidal. Yeah. And yeah. her mom even knows it. Her mom is like, please don't, like, she's like, please don't do, like, she knows that that's what she's implying, essentially. Yeah. And actually, I should have, I should have given a little, like, trigger warning disclaimer before we even started uh, yeah, talking right. about this. Um, right. I apologize to anybody who has made it this far and is, might possibly be triggered by, like, the terminology and the the subject matter again just like i said with the 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 rape storyline if you cannot deal with it please fast forward skip ahead or just turn it off i i'm not offended it's fine um i i understand this this is it honestly is so heavy it, it gets goofy it gets goofy they make a lot of, they make light of this kind of really real thing that happens to people and it's like kind of a like um it's very emo and like using this thing i don't know i feel like it, they I, were very okay i think i hear i know what you're saying basically it seems very when we're watching it like the especially like teresa in the living room with the music and the dark room it was very after school special lifetime movie very heavy-handed like this is what's going on but it is so they it's, romanticized it a little bit too say much. it again I feel like they romanticized it a little too much. Like they made it seem like the right thing to do and like the the noble thing to do for her. Like if she really loved him, this is the only like normal thing for her to do in this situation. And I just think that it was like, I don't know. It's just really dark and it made it seem romantic in some weird way. To me, I, I do see like how how you could pick that up that it that it was almost romanticized it did seem like it was like from to re is that's what teresa does right she romanticizes yeah. things she does that's kind of like her like on the shtick. motorcycle it reminded me of her on the motorcycle yeah that's like her whole shtick I, me like the way i felt about the treatment of the the of suicide as a as a subject matter i didn't like it because I actually felt like it was almost too flippant. I felt like it was almost too, yeah, silly. Uh, it's, yep. Especially when we get to the the later part of what happens when she goes to hell or whatever. It was yeah. just to me, it was just way too jokey. Too yeah, it can't be. The whole thing in hell was beyond like silly, and it, it's like it also really demonized her. I know it literally demonized her, but it, it's like it really played into that. And they a, a couple of times said like, oh, like for her religion, this is what it is. But it really like she was down there with like Nazis and stuff. And it's like she was hurting and she was a teenage kid. It's just like, yeah, I feel like it was very campy. 100%. I agree. I was disgusted. And we will talk about it in a second. So Teresa, uh, she's she's feeling hopeless, right? Yeah. Um, Pilar tries to, you know, comfort her daughter. She tells her. You know, you have so much to live for. You have your whole life ahead of you. I'm gonna go make us some hot chocolate. We'll I'll be right back and we'll and we can sit down and we can talk some more. You you know, I love you. And when Pilar leaves, Teresa gives her the slip, right? She's like, I'm sorry, mama, I gotta go. And yeah. she leaves the house and she says there's nothing left for her now that she's lost Ethan. She has no hope and she has no reason to live. Yeah. And so uh Teresa goes to the wharf and this is when she and M Miguel have a little 
Oh, I can't boy. even believe Miguel is like he basically like he recognizes what's happening and then she's like it's okay actually and he's like okay and then she like says goodbye forever and he's like take care like he doesn't like uh, I it was understand and then he doesn't understand yeah even it was really obvious what was happening he drives me crazy so Teresa uh, Teresa is down at the wharf. She is contemplating jumping into the ocean. Let's be clear. Yeah. It's the middle of winter, right? It's like February at this point. Yeah. So she she's contemplating jumping in. She gives all her reasons. She's hopeless. E Ethan, she's lost Ethan forever. She has no reason to live on, go on. Yeah. Um, I imagine the pregnancy has something oh, to do yeah. with it too, right? First, yeah. And um, so she starts, she climbs up onto the railing. She's yeah. standing on the railing. Yeah. And that's when Kay and Miguel walk by and Miguel's like, Teresa, what are you doing up there? What are you doing? Get she's down, like, girl. On the toe of the Titanic. And she's like, I'm, I lost my scarf. And he's like, well, it looks like it's gone. It's like, yeah. Like, yeah. that's. It's not what she was looking for. He's so dopey. He's so stupid. So he pulls her down. He gets her down. He's like, oh, you need to be careful because this time of the year, the current is really strong and anybody who falls in is going to be dragged out to sea. Right. Um, and then they have like a really like sweet touch. I thought it was sweet too. I did think it was yeah it was sweet this is this was the moment where i was because i know we all know what teresa's about what? to do and then Miguel is none the wiser sibling kind of like so it's like and she was a like a big sister moment like which i hadn't seen before with her checking in on charity and how he was doing mm -hmm. yeah i hear you and i think the reason why this one touched me so much and made me so like sad is because even though Miguel's being an idiot and he's dopey and he's thick-headed, that's who Miguel is, right? Yeah. And she loves her brother. And we as an audience know exactly what's about to happen. Like we all know, or we believe that we know that Teresa's about to, she was about to do it. Like she was going to do yeah. it. And in this moment, she could have decided, you know what? I, no, you know, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, but the way she hugs Miguel and tells him, you know, I love you, goodbye, is like when she says it, you know, you know yeah. what she's about to do, and she's already into it, yeah, you know she loves him or whatever. It's like she's already saying goodbye to her. Shit, don't want to make you cry. I'm so sorry. It's, I no, it's it. it... <laughs> it's just like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just. I cry all the time. Please don't feel sorry. I hear you. I, I'm so sorry. This really just hit so, it just hit home for me. Cause like, I remember the last time I, I hugged my brother and it, it was, I think, I think about it all the time. I did. I had like, I had no clue. And Miguel had no clue that that was what was happening with Teresa too. Yeah, and so I think that's why this this really, this really 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 hit home for me this week, and um and I also why I got so I really got really upset with the way they treated Teresa after yeah. she jumps in the water. So let's move on because I'm I like <laughs> right. You don't want to sit um, on it. Um. Okay. But, so yeah. she hugs him. She tells him, "I love you. Goodbye." And he and Kay, you know, flit off to other places, right? They're walking around yeah. the wharf talking more about charity. So yeah. she she jumps in. That's all I have to say about it. She jumps in and it was horrible to watch. I didn't care for it at all. And yeah. um, she jumps in and she starts to 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 hear a voice um, as she's struggling in the water. She hears this voice calling out her, Teresa. Teresa, come to me, Teresa. And it's Julian's voice. We can hear the yeah. Julian's voice. And then she sinks under the water and she gets transported to hell. Okay, y'all, she gets transported to hell. And like I think you said earlier that they keep making uh, comments because Pilar, once she goes back to the living room and sees that Teresa's <laughs> gone. Talking about it. She's like, this is a mortal sin. You're going to burn for all eternity. Like, it's so dark and it's like such a whatever. And it's such a fucking crazy thing to think. It's a crazy thing to say. For as, a, as a 
Yeah. As when your kid, when your daughter just did that. It's like, instead of being like, Teresa, like she was like, oh no, like technically this is a mortal sin. And like your afterlife will be tarnished or something. Yeah. And it's like, I get it that y'all are religious or whatever. Yeah, but, but it wasn't human it wasn't a human thing it's not a human thing at all that's i i would i yeah that's it was gross it to me is so gross it was just a, the treatment of it is so gross and so it they was do like, what's it called what it was like um uh passions being political like they were pushing their agenda or whatever in that moment yeah which they do a lot right like it's, of course yeah they're With very the very heavy-handed on the on the the specifically the religious element of these issues like yeah. like abortion like suicide yeah. like like drinking like anything in this show they have like a very puritanical sex. view of yeah yeah so she jumps in the water uh so let's talk about pilar pilar finds that teresa is no longer in the living room and she rushes off into the night to find her daughter um she goes to the mansion first where to re where ivy and rebecca <laughs> ivy and rebecca have been like going at each other's throats about who's the real mrs crane and this no they that. clearly both aren't either like neither of them they're both out of the running so it's like weird <laughs> yeah but the one thing they can agree on and this is like the conversation they're having when Polar shows up. Well, Ethan and Gwen show up first, but we're going to yeah. group yes. them all together. The one thing they can agree on is that they want Ethan to marry Gwen and they're happy that Teresa is no longer in the picture, right? Yeah. Ethan and Gwen show up. They talk to their respective mothers. Gwen I will. I'm gonna give Gwen because y'all know I'm not the biggest Gwen fan, but I'm. Gonna, I have to give her props when props are due. Gwen says to Rebecca at one point because Rebecca basically makes a comment about um, Teresa being out of the picture and what we can do to like get you in there with yeah. Ethan. And Gwen's like, you know what? I don't want to win Ethan through manipulations. I want Ethan to be with me because he loves me and whatever it is that you and are scheming. Ivy are scheming up, I want no parts of it. So I can appreciate that. I know it won't hold firm, but I can appreciate that she yeah. that's how she felt in the beginning. Yeah. Um. So Polar shows up. She's frantic. She's looking for her daughter. She says, "Has have any of you seen her? We're like, why would she be here? Which I also thought, I was like, why would, why would she go to the mansion of all places? It, I feel like it played into the whole like, uh, basically like, thing to get Ethan there. It, it the whole like, she went there to let Ethan know. I don't think this is like what she consciously did, but she basically went there to tell Ethan Teresa is jumped into the water, and then he has to go save her and basically go back on what his not true feelings, but like basically he was not going to be with her. But then this kind of changed things. It forced his hand in yeah. being back a little bit yeah I, th I think that's i think you are making a very good point salient point um so she she does she tells them what's going on that she thinks Teresa might be trying to take her own life and ethan tries to call her everybody's trying to call her she's not answering the phone so pilar gwen and ethan all go out into the night to search for Teresa. when they leave Ivy says, well, if Teresa does kill herself, it'll be one less problem both of us have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And they both are like, like cackling about that shit. Like they bond over that. A yeah. Bit. Like, and then Rebecca says, you and I agree on something. And she says, if Teresa and her baby die, there'll be one, there'll be two Mrs. Cranes left. There'll only be two Mrs. Cranes left. God, they let some of the nastiest stuff come out of their mouths. Is it like oh, I did like Ivy up until this like part of the story. Like I feel like it's just like sh it's just so dark and like the way it's not just that they had the thought, it's the fact that they laughed about it the way they did and like it's just gross. Yeah. Cuz it's one thing to be like, yeah, I mean if Teresa dies, like I, there's no love loss between us. Yeah. But there's a it's a different thing to be like gleeful about this young girl's demise who also might I add is for Ivy one of the, the closest people in your lives that's her daughter and maybe right. y'all aren't the closest of friends anymore right now because of you know all the things that have transpired but that's still like 25 years of friendship uh, yeah. uh, allegedly right 
Right. Yeah. It's I it, it's particularly egregious coming from Ivy. It really is. Um, and then they toast to Teresa's demise and they say, May she burn in hell. Right. Which is what she does. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let let's talk about what happens, Teresa. Oh, there was something I wanted to say about Rebecca and Ivy. There was like a specific thing that was said that I wanted to talk about. Ivy. It was something that Ivy said. Maybe it'll come up. I'll think about it. Yeah. I so think. um because some my my notes are a little messy this week and because of the way things I don't know how you, yeah I don't know how you take notes that make any sense <laughs> Please. So, so uh Teresa she has sunk under the water and she is transported to hell she finds herself in hell yeah and she goes on like this crazy little ride through hell again like I'm it reminds, at it. Of, like, it reminded me of like blood cells going through like a vein like it was like so weird the graphics were weird that's funny it's like she was on the magic school bus basically right I was just singing that <laughs> totally yeah and, with the chariot of demons yeah they put her on a chariot I don't like why anyway yeah. I also thought she was kind of chill about it. Like, if it were me, I would be, like, passing out and, like, really... She was just, like, pretty cool about it. I don't know. Like, she was riding Space Mountain. She, just she dealt with it well. Like, Yeah, she did. She, she, was, she, she was keeping it together. She was confused, but she was keeping it together. And then she gets to, like, hell proper, because they had to, like, zoom her through, right? And then she gets to hell proper, where it's basically, like, a Magic. living room. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like the Green Banner a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like the crane mansion, like the living room area, but like all red, right? Like all dark. Yes. And she gets there and like Hitler and some other people are sitting around. Like, I think Stalin, maybe Khrushchev. Okay. I thought it was Russian. Freud. Like, I was like, why is he there? It just seems like a lot of Germans, like, is what I noticed. It was a lot of Germans. Well, one yeah. was Russian. One was definitely Russian. And okay. I, I was like, I didn't know if that was Lenin. I, okay. It definitely wasn't Stalin. He didn't look like Stalin. They didn't even try right. to make him look like Stalin. And they had, like, a Hannibal Lecter guy. Yeah. And a lot of people from the 40s were there. Yeah, and they had, like, prisoners in, like, striped suits, you know, so. It's all types of villains. Yeah, it was goofy. Yeah. It was goofy. It was <laughs> stupid. Um, she gets there and she's like, if this is hell, why are you all just sitting around having coffee? And they're like, because we're the guests of honor. <sighs> Whatever. They're like, there's somebody here who wants to talk to you. There's someone here who knows you. And she's like, who the who do I know in hell? Right. Right. And then the devil himself comes out. And she's like, I don't know the devil. I don't know him. I don't know him. And then he morphs into Julian. <laughs> I, I know. You know, it's crazy because I was just crying. And again, that's what this show does to me. Like it, I, I got yeah. emotional. And then I, and then I kept watching, and it was like this nonsense. And I was like, in honestly, yeah. at points, I was enraged at how ridiculous it was. But also, yeah. it's like so stupid. You have to laugh. It's so stupid. Yeah. Also, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know Julian isn't dead. So we knew the whole time that was like a mirage Julian or whatever. And um, I guess was zombie charity, not to like. Yeah, we'll go ahead that. and say it is zombie charity, like, which was a fun little twist. It made sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, it's a fun way to kind of rope her into the other things that are happening in the in the town. Right. Yeah. So uh, they're pulling her towards the devil. And she's like, I don't know the devil. And then it's, and then the devil turns into Julian and he's like, I've been waiting for you. And um, she says, Julian isn't my friend. He took everything from me. And then Hitler starts laughing. He's like, don't you know that's what friends are for? <laughs> what are you doing? Sure. So then Teresa immediately just starts to physically attack Julian. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on board. Yes. Um, and she's like, you're the reason, you're the reason that I'm here. You're the reason that I kill myself. Um, this is all your fault. And then he gets real mad and turns back into the dark. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. keep her on the line, kind of. She didn't really have any choice in the matter. They made it seem like it was her consenting to this shit, but like really it was very like, uh, shoveling her in one direction through fear and power and crap. That's exactly what happens. She, um, 
the de- he turns back into the devil. He basically subdues her, gets her to kind of calm down. He says, you know, being mean to me won't solve your problems, but listening listening to me just might. And then he turns back into Julian. And he explains, he tells, oh, I hated the language around suicide. He's like, you took the easy way out. Yeah. Like, and yeah. like, it, oh my God, it, it really upset me. It upsets me anytime. Cause I remember growing up with that kind of rhetoric. I don't know. I, I grew up in the South. So it's like every, everybody's a Christian and, and it, it is that kind of Christianity, like the fire and brimstone, like you don't question and like suicide is a mortal sin and you no won't burn in hell for all eternity. Like and like people that are going suffering to that degree, there's no sympathy. Basically, if you choose that you're like outcasted and yeah and the and so that terminology of like that's the easy way out it's like that's probably the hardest way to go it's i mean really yeah how is that the easy way out it's like yeah that's so fun well yeah. passion look fun but yeah it's ridiculous um so he tells her that she gave up too soon and that she could have had ethan uh but now she blew it and she's gonna have to spend all eternity in hell and she says, well, Ethan said he would never get back with me. What could I have done? <laughs> I mean, you could have not killed yourself. Let's be clear. Yeah. Not over Ethan. Let me be clear. Do, do I have sympathy for Teresa? Absolutely. Like just, but when I think about the reason, like the reason she threw herself into the ocean and that that reason was Ethan, it does throw me a little bit yeah it does Ethan what I thought when she said that I thought it was like what Miguel should have done though like she like was like he said no so what was I gonna do it's like kind of like just accept that answer I she took it to the extreme but like uh yeah that's what you should do when someone says we're done that is what you should do when someone says you're done and she but yeah you're right Teresa did take it to the extreme (laughs) for sure um and so uh she says what could i do he said he never wanted to be with me and the devil responds with you should have fought like a crane yeah and then you would be back on the road to being with ethan and then so she's like so how can i how could i how what can i do and he says you know what it's not too late actually um you can still get everything you ever wanted this is when we see Tabitha and Timmy kind of watching the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. They're watching it through the, on that rock or like an ice piece of ice or something. It's like and, a crystal. Yeah. And uh, Tabitha is ex- explains to us that uh, the forces of darkness are using Julian to hatch a plan to bring Teresa back to life so that she can pursue Ethan and that, her pursuit of Ethan will bring more pain and chaos to Harmony than they've ever seen before. Yeah, like Teresa's the Antichrist or something. And y'all, I want to be clear. I do not remember this from my first watch around. Like, I did not remember that she did this. I didn't remember she went to hell. None of it. And Back to the dead after signing a contract. Yeah, and it makes me it makes me wonder um, well, and of course, this will all be revealed and everything, but Teresa does start doing some crazy shit after this, like really. Okay. And so, yeah. And it makes me I and and I always was just like on Teresa's side because I like Teresa. Yeah. I think had I known, I mean, had I known this little caveat, I would probably still be on Teresa's side. But I definitely it definitely would have been a very different viewing for me. Though again, like I said, I don't remember everything that happens. There's a possibility that because this turned out to be zombie charity and not the real devil like that this whole contract thing isn't gonna hold up and like she will like be released that. yeah i feel like also she like he basically just had to dangle the gwen thing in front of her and her true colors came out that's how she feels without any influence like she was like oh okay like i don't want him to be with gwen and i'll do anything that's Teresa. so it's not actually the devil thing like that's um I think that part of her behavior after I'm assuming is kind of Teresa E. Oh, yeah. Make sense with her character. Oh yeah, 100%. Um so he explains, you know, you got to you're going to have to uh, follow my plan. I got a plan for you, girly, and uh the, the devil tells her you can get Ethan back if you follow this 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 quick little plan. Here 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 it is. And he whispers yeah. something in Teresa uh, Teresa's ear and uh, she she's like I can't do that 
I can't do that. I, I, it'll hurt so so many people will be hurt. So many people in Harmony will be hurt. And, and he's like, well, the main people will be hurt are Ivy and Rebecca and Gwen. And you hate yeah, they, them, right? Yeah. yeah. And they kind of deserve it. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's like, don't that, don't you deserve to get revenge on them? And like you said, that's really all it kind of took for her to be like, you know, you know what? I, I you have a point there, devil. Tell me what the plan is. And she, she agrees. Right. And so he then pricks her finger and <laughs> really fast. draws a bunch of blood from her and yeah. gives her a contract and tells her she has to sign this contract in blood. She doesn't even bother to even try to read it. I also like, I, I just have in my notes something about a rat. I don't remember what that is, but there was like, it was just very dark and it was so very clearly evil. Like it was just like, um such a bad deal for her to take and so obviously a bad deal and she was like what's happening and he was like just do it and she was like okay I feel like that kind of makes it not her fault because yeah it, I mean it, listen it, here was her choice it definitely wasn't yeah. her fault let me be yeah clear. go to hell forever or do this and get out of hell yeah, yeah. It, Teresa it definitely was not Teresa's fault because she First of all, yeah, the choice was either you stay in hell for absolute ever, forever and ever in perpetuity, or or you can go back to life and have Ethan. Yeah. Yeah. It's an easy choice, right? Yeah. I, like I'm not choosing hell. I, ugh, I don't know. It depends on what he has said to me about like what I had to do, but I You have to assume it involved her family though, too. Like it had to have, have been it would have involved Louise, Sheridan, her mom, like everyone. It wasn't just those three women that she hates, but right. that was the selling point for her, I guess, was. Yeah. So um, Tab Tabitha and Timmy are like watching all this from their cave. And, and I, this was my favorite line is probably going to be the, the episode title. After Teresa signs the contract, Tabitha says, Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald is about to send all of Harmony straight to hell. <laughs> It's a good one. It's great. Yeah. Um. So she signs the contract with Devil Julian, and uh, t he he has something else to tell her she has to do. He whispers it in her ear. Um. We can't hear it. She says, "I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm not gonna do it. Um. I I don't want to get." She says, "I don't want to get Ethan back through lies and manipulation. I want a relationship with him based on honesty and the truth." Uh, and then he's like, well, this hell ain't no fairy tale, honey. You, if you, you either go back and do what I tell you to do or you stay here forever. Yeah. Um, and she says she can't be a part of anything so evil. Too many people will be hurt uh, with the second part. Both parts. She was against it. And yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, eventually he she she decides i'll go back I'll, I'll do whatever you say oh i know what it is so what? ethan and ethan is in the water okay I, we, I skipped over this and i didn't mean to uh ethan finds ethan pilar and gwen come across miguel and um k and they yeah. ask them have y'all seen have you seen teresa and explain to them what's going on and Miguel's like, no, Teresa's fine. I literally just saw her. Like, Teresa would never do something like that. I just saw her. And they're like, where did you I see her? I saw her, like, on the wharf, like, jumping into the water. She would never right. do that. Right. And so he leads them back to the spot where he saw Teresa, but she's not there, right? And Ethan's like, Ethan says, are you sure this is where you saw her? Which, to be fair, would irritate me, too, if if he had said that to me. Like, are you sure this is where you saw her? It's like, yeah. Yes, she's my. That's son. why I brought you here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just Miguel happened. says Miguel snaps at Ethan, and it's like, why are you even? Why are you even here? Why don't you just leave and let Mama, me and Mama, look for her? Because if you hadn't broken up with her, we wouldn't even be in this situation. It's like Miguel. But here's the thing: I appreciate the loyalty. That and that's what I wrote in my my. Um, I just like being mean to um Ethan. Like just, yeah, like yeah yeah i appreciate the loyalty but he's so off on it like yeah. he, Teresa was wrong right and like if charity had well and you know what i actually you know what i'm having a moment where i'm having a, a realization that if charity had done all of those things miguel still would want to be with her yeah so to him 
to him is like you, yeah. you should have because he says he calls him selfish he says um you you broke it we wouldn't be in this position if you hadn't broken up with her and he says if you weren't so selfish and if you had been a little more understanding maybe we wouldn't even be looking for Teresa. and yeah he calls him selfish but it's because miguel believes in this like idea of obsessive love but again he's like 16 right yeah yes so he doesn't know what he's talking about um so then this couple of ladies show up and they ask them have you seen this girl give them they give them the description and they're like we just called 911 and say we saw a girl fitting that description jump into the water ethan doesn't miss a beat he jumps right in like a dolphin like he just yeah. dives right in <laughs> he doesn't think twice and it is at this i mean there's been several moments in the show where Gwen should have just like been like, you know, I'm never going to have Ethan. <laughs> right. Yeah. But this is definitely another one of those moments where it's like, Absolutely. girl, he clearly is insane. He found his eye for her in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, he didn't think about it. He just jumped right into that freezing cold water to get her. Ethan also did like a whole Miguel thing with her. Like when they were together right before this, like he was like, you're such a good friend, Gwen. Like he did that whole thing where it was like, he clearly has this one person in, that he's into. It's not really a, a triangle. It's just him and her. And then the one that wants him. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. And all the men jump in right after Teresa, really. Yeah. Well, Ethan <laughs> jumps in. And yeah. then like Sam and Sam and somebody else show up and Miguel then jumps into the water and then Sam jumps into the water. And it's Sam like, I, it's like so stupid. It's like, yeah, like your fucking son and Sam are going to like, it's like, yes, I just don't know why she doesn't see that. The way Ivy was so upset when she got the phone call that like um, Ethan had jumped into the water and she's like, oh, Teresa, this is all her fault. It, like. I mean, you do you not see your part in all of this, yeah, Ivy? Some responsibility, a hundred percent. She she it's like she sees no nothing of her part in any of it, and it it, it does drive me a little crazy. She just and seemed I, more multi dimensional than that. Like Rebecca seems very like cardboard, like that's her. But Ivy, I feel like seems smarter. Well, she's not. She doesn't seem smart anymore. But yeah, she, did. she used to be more interesting, more conflicted, yeah. you know, yeah. more human. And yeah. now it's like almost just like turning into a super villain. A hundred percent. And uh, and it's not interesting. And it's not interesting. There's nothing interesting about it. Yeah. You know? Um and so they jump into the water after Teresa. They're all Oh my gosh. I actually, when they jumped into the water, I was like, yes, we're using the water set again. Passions. I was going to say that they're getting their money out of this water set again. Passions yeah. must've spent so much money on that. Cause they use it a lot and as they yeah. should, as they should, but we literally just did the Bermuda stuff yeah, and, they're and in the, water every other episode. Yeah. Um, but they're getting, they're getting their use out of that, out of that set. <laughs> NBC yeah. was like, you asked for it. You better fucking use it. <laughs> you own it now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so they, uh, they, they jump in the water and then there's the EMTs and all of them show up. And then finally some divers show up. Ethan actually is the one who finds Teresa and pulls her yeah. out of the water, um, pulls her out of the water, gets her up to, <laughs> gets her up on shore. The EMT takes exactly one look at this little girl and says, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she's dead there's no pulse he he's worse than eve honestly he, he, he they did not do anything for her in fact in fact ethan starts performing cpr on her and there's all of these these emts uh, uh also asked the emts they were like how long would it take for this to like her to die and they're like who knows it could be hours it could be a couple minutes it's just like okay yeah they're just not that bright. They don't know anything. Like I've like I've said a million times, everybody in this town is bad at their job. Everybody yeah. in this town is bad at their job. 
and yeah it's like all something's in the water there we've all, seen now we've seen stuff. the emts in action we've seen the divers in action we've seen the fire department in action we've seen them all in action and they're all terrible the doctors sam as the police everyone yeah anyone with any authority is dumb as a brick bad at their job the only person in town that's kind of good at their job is jessica at her job at the at the bnb like that's anything yeah that's <laughs> That doesn't help at all. No. Okay. So he pulls her up and the EMT says it's too late. Uh, she doesn't have a pulse. Ethan does CPR on her. Meanwhile, in hell, there's an alarm starting to go off. Yeah. Time's yeah. ticking. Yeah. Yeah. Time's a ticking, girl. Julian, as the devil, tells her, uh, yeah. you have to choose. You need to choose now Are you because your body is nearly um, at the point where it can't be revived. Yeah. And so she finally says, I'll do it. Yes. And so they get her rushed on out of hell the same way she came in, back on that chariot and back up the anus of hell. I like <laughs> totally. <laughs> and then her dark spirit settles into her body. Didn't didn't they say like they were like, Why is it getting dark all of a sudden? Or something yeah. like that. Gwen's Every like, Why is it so dark now? I was like, it I was dark it. outside. But I didn't notice it even as a viewer i was like it didn't get dark but whatever and then her she settles back in her body and she's there yeah and she wakes up they do not take her to the hospital she oh, was dead not. she would be talking about brain dead she would have like um lost a lot of oxygen and like yeah this girl was actually dead they she said she didn't bottom have of the water for like many minutes for at least many minutes, if not like an hour. I feel like she was there for a long time. They gave her a blanket. <laughs> Here's some hot cocoa. They gave her a blanket. So um, she comes to, she sees Ethan. And uh, well, but before that, uh, the reason why Teresa decided yes is because Julian Devil showed her a vision of Ethan giving her CPR, asking her to come back to life. So yeah. in that moment, she was, she made a firm decision. She was like, he does love me. He loves me. I'll go back. Yeah. Mm. She gets back, okay, <laughs> and uh, is transported back out of hell. And she says to him, the first thing she says when she opens her eyes is, Ethan, I came back to be with you. And uh. he looks at her and he says, Teresa, nothing has changed <laughs> so awkward yes i i felt bad for her i was like shit he says nothing has changed but teresa has changed like yeah. there's a clear change in her demeanor um every a couple of people i think miguel and i yeah. both kind of make a I note how she's talking weird and stuff yeah also she now knows that him saying no to her doesn't actually mean anything like her will is like gonna make it happen it doesn't matter that he's rejecting her. And yeah, she's possessed by the devil a little bit. Yeah. It's fun. It's good. It's good. It's good fun. It's, good. it's why we watch Passions. Yeah. So Teresa is fine for now. She's up and moving about. They don't take her to the hospital. But that's pretty much it for that storyline this week, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Great, great, great. I'm done with it. Very quickly, y'all, let's talk about Sheridan and Louisa. It's, it's, it's nothing. There's hardly anything happening. We can I, we probably can do this in three minutes, and I, I'm going to challenge us do to it. do it in three yeah. minutes okay. All right. and, or less than. Basically, Brian and, and Diana are on Bermuda Island. Diana has decided that she's going to give up on the man that she loves from her past. Brian, like, congratulates her on this, for, but he's really congratulating himself because he fucking sucks. Yeah. And um, she says, you know, the, the great love of my life is over. I could, I could feel him giving me permission to move on. Meanwhile, yeah. in Harmony, Beth and Louise are having almost having the same that. conversation. Yes. Yeah. They're having nearly an identical conversation. So that is basically what happens. Um, Diana has another, like, she does have a little what if conversation with Brian. Yeah. Where she says... Well, what if I do let him go and move on and then he does catch up? I was, when she said that, I was like, then you'd break up with whoever. Like, then you would get back with him. If that happens, then you just get back with him. When he right, especially up. if you like this great love of your life and you've been it's very not, clear with Brian about that. 
Absolutely. And then also I felt like both of them were kind of like just actually needing support and both Beth and Brian kind of then use that opportunity to like guilt them into making a decision to be like, it's over basically. It was very annoying, specifically the part where uh, Diana says, what if my, my love comes back, my lover comes back, what then? And Brian says to her, well, that's not going to happen because he's dead. Oh, I can't stand him. He sucks. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then she apologizes to him. Yeah, it's horrible. She and he's apologizes. Like, he's like, if you decide right in this moment that it's over, you have, then it's over. It's it. Like he basically, and that's not true. There are no rules that say that, but he's like, says that's the rules. So then she's like, okay, like she's so docile and. Oh, I, I don't like this version of Sheridan that they've given us. Yeah, and she apologizes to him. She says, I'm sorry, Brian, for dragging yeah. you through all this emotional pain. You are the one in emotional pain. He is fine. Yeah. yeah, he just is listening to you and manipulating you, like using your pain against you. It's so annoying. Oh, I can't stand him. And then he's like, he it's fine. Seconds. Like, it's like she should deal with it however she deals with it. It just happened. Like, I don't know. Yeah. He tells her it's fine, but you have to make a decision and stick to it. And then he tells her it's it's for your own good. Ugh, ugh. Ugh, daddy issues. <laughs> He's so creepy. He is. And then he asks her, can you do that, Diana? Can you let go of the man that you love? Meanwhile, Beth and Luis are having a conversation. Uh, and Beth like brings up the fortune teller stuff the past lives stuff and then she's like it sounds like you and sheridan have been locked in a cycle of falling in love and then seeing it pa end painfully and maybe what you just did maybe you just released sheridan you from ended that it painful cycle yeah. how did that how could that possibly end the painful cycle it doesn't make any sense it's a theory but she says she posits it like as if this is she's well versed in like fortune telling shit and past lives and she's like, maybe I guess you did her a favor. And if you let her go, you're actually being caring in that way. That's it, like the, yeah. Ending the cycle would be, we end up together, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't yeah. end in the painful way that it what we just did is the pain, is the cycle. And he also doesn't know that it's the end. Both of them are like, is it the end or is it not the end? It doesn't feel like the end for either of them, but then there's people are like, it is the end and this mm -hmm. is it. Yeah. And then Beth calls him selfish if he doesn't accept her version of what's happening right then. Yes. I was so annoyed. I was so I, annoyed. Was so wouldn't a red flag go off for you if that happened? She like, says, you're selfish. You're not, you're only thinking of yourself. You're not thinking about Sheridan or what Sheridan would want. Okay. It seems like that's all he's doing, actually. Well, he also, as you have said to me too many times, Sheridan is not here. Sheridan yeah. is dead. So I have to grapple want. with this on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's so annoying. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Um, she tells him if you really wanted to honor Sheridan's memory, then you at least have to try to be happy. And he says, You're right. And she tells him, you know, somewhere out there, there's someone wonderful waiting for you. Somewhere <laughs> with short hair, there's someone in a horrible leather jacket who might be better for you. <laughs> She, and uh, she, yeah she's obviously talking about herself yeah. and um what i think what really bothered me about this too is that it really has only been a few months since sheridan died yeah. mm -hmm. and he i personally i think they should everybody her hank her his mother everybody should give him at least a year before they even mention the idea of him quote moving on from sheridan totally he has a lot to work through yeah he has a lot to work through. They make it seem like he's like a, I want to say pussy. He, they make it sound like he's like a big baby if he doesn't immediately get over it. And like, yeah. Yeah. Poor Luis. Poor I love Luis. Him. Poor Luis. Okay, so that's it. You that got anything it. to add to that? Well, you know what? I have a story. No, can I tell you? A okay, I have I would to love to hear a story. I love it. So literally like, a week ago, my cousin, the same one that got me into passions, called me and she works in LA. She's like an assistant of someone who's like a producer. And she ran into this guy in the hall and like they both had like, had like it's like kind of a meet cute, but it wasn't. It was just like 
whatever. And then after it happened, she realized it was Luis and they had just run into each other. Isn't that crazy? I took it as like a kismet thing that this was like, I was going to talk to you. Isn't that crazy? And she said he's still gorgeous. I mean, I follow him on Instagram and he is gorgeous on Instagram. I imagine in person he's something else. Yeah, but that's all. That's the only thing I have to add. Everything else I feel like we've wrapped up perfectly. Well, thank you for adding that. I love that. I love those little stories. Me too. Okay, so let's move on. Let's finish up. We're going to talk about Sam and Grace and what's going on oh with them. Oh my god. Oh, I thought that was it. <laughs> no, nope, we still have to talk okay. about this a little bit. It it this okay. is how much this is how much notes I have left. This is it. Okay. All right. <laughs> it. So um, Oh yeah, Wait, of course. Sam and Grace and John and John yeah that uh, was yeah oh I remember oh I just remember what it was that I thought about Ivy earlier today yeah. what, I'm a, I, so I want to say this really quickly as like an yeah. add-on to the Teresa stuff okay Ivy because and I forgot it's in this part of my notes for some reason it's like in the wrong place Sam? yeah but um Ivy at one point says out loud and considers the possibility that Rebecca was the one who sent her letter to the tabloid and and she was like adamant about it and I just want to say that I am that makes me even more upset with Ivy because when she felt like it was Teresa who did it yeah and her all her anger was even though it was like oversized it was at least in the the right place in her mind yeah but now i'm learning that she actually believes she doesn't truly believe that teresa sent that to the tabloid she actually believes that rebecca did it she's consciously aware that she's a scapegoat and she's like oh well i just don't like her basically so that's not important no i'm glad though it was in these notes and i and i'm not talking about the rest of it like itching your brain and you're like what was i about to say yeah i'm glad all I right figured it out Let's oh about grace being totally insane <laughs> yeah so sam and grace have this conversation about john and that they have to get the dna test and sam, the last time we talked about this grace was like she wasn't happy about it but she had finally she had gotten on board and she was like yeah. she, she was honestly pretty chill about it after she after she got on board at first she was like ridiculous really yeah upset. um but now she's back to being upset and angry and um then she's like i can't lose another son what is that yeah what was that was she referencing the ivy thing like in the hospital she, yes she was referencing because she you know she lost the baby and she assumed that that baby was a boy she had no clue that that baby was That's a boy was say, is, yeah was it a son okay I thought she, she just meant, yeah maybe her long lost older son but she meant the baby she was just hoping for a boy when she in her early, in the early stages of her pregnancy. Yeah, that whole thing. Yes. Yeah. And so she's upset. She's worried. She's like, God wouldn't God wouldn't be so cruel to take another son from me. But oh, here's so the thing. First of all, like I, I sympathize with the her losing her first that first baby. Like I get that. Yeah. Of course. This is a grown ass oh, man right. who has just walked into your life a week ago. Mm-hmm. I it can't be it couldn't possibly be that devastating to you but it is for both of them like he acts like that's his mother and like he's like mom like <laughs> i don't know it's just so weird that the feelings run deep for both of them more I deep think, than should. i think i agree like the, the the feelings are way too deep for both of them but i will say i can for, forgive john a little bit more than i can grace because on grace's end first of all she has amnesia she doesn't remember anything and I get that she wants to like connect to something, but she has, she, she wasn't missing out on a son, right? She yeah. had some kids. She didn't know he existed. He, however, knew he had a mother somewhere oh, out there who he yeah. just wanted to connect with. He just needed to put a person in the, in that role. Yeah. yeah. So I can, so I can understand John a little bit more, especially considering his dad has validated to him that that is his mother. Right? Yeah. And close to his dad. Yeah. Yeah. He really up to him but grace it doesn't make any sense but anyway uh john is at the bnb talking about how great his mom is to david <laughs> um he also mentions how charity sexually harassed him at the dance yeah and he's like yeah everybody's been really nice but that charity girl's pretty weird <laughs> yeah 
That's an understatement. Yeah. Um, and then he thanks his dad for bringing him to Harmony so he could meet his finally meet his mom. And then John's like, we should go over there for some hot chocolate and tomato soup cake. <laughs> He's like, I we know like how much you love her tomato soup. Was that established that he loved her soup cake? He everybody likes it apparently. I don't know. She he you know what? He loves it because it was lovingly made by his mother and he's never had a mom. And okay. I bet those I bet those daughters are more than happy to let him eat up all the tomato soup cake. Yeah, they're like, please take my portion as well. And they're like, less for us. We are sick of this shit. Um <laughs> And so he and David go over to um, Sam and Grace's house because um, he David isn't going to go at first. He's like, you know, I shouldn't go. And John's like, no, I like seeing my parents together. I thought that was so annoying, too. It's like, OK. Yeah, he's trying to do the Lindsay Lohan parent trap. It's not working for me. You know, yeah. He's also not working. Implying that they're his parents. And what we were just saying, like, that's he's never seen them together his whole entire life. That's not his mom, whatever. Yeah. So they just let themselves into Grace and Sam's home. While they they're walk, talking. Yeah, yeah. And they walk in in the middle of this conversation about a test. And, and John questions like, what test? What test do I have to take? And Grace explains the whole Ivy plot situation. And he gets really offended. He's like, you think we're lying? You think my dad was li would lie like that? My dad's not like that. He's a great man. He's an honorable man. Don't you trust me and my dad? Because you know us so well and our characters so well. This is why I was laughing when we brought this up. Is Then his dad is like very awkwardly and obviously like turns to the side and is like, so awkwardly and so guilty looking it's yeah. Like, oh. yeah so this whole conversation is interrupted by the news of T T Teresa jumping into the ocean so that's the, and that is the end that of the week cool that is it so we made it that was a, I think it was a good episode and I enjoyed the week honestly for the most part there was some there was some heavy stuff there was some ridiculous stuff there, there was some highs and some lows no yeah. knows. Uh, <laughs> but uh yeah thank you so much for being here i'll see you again next week yes you will i'm very much looking forward to it all right this was great where can everybody find you online if you want people to follow you yeah i'm on instagram fair folk trade and that's f-a-i-r um folk trade and yeah check me out follow me i would love that she's got a really cool page a lot of really thank nice you um pictures it's beautiful pictures. Oriented, so it's like tabitha-esque oriented yeah it's a it's a little witchy a little like fairies and like yeah you know, cute things. yep yep all right um so and i'll link i'll link that in the description everybody so you can check out her page and as always you know you can catch me on the social media here and there check the link in my description or the link tree and uh with that that's it you are my passion for life